have an uninterrupted electricity and water supply from solar energy in the Gambia and beyond. Worry no more, because Solar Enterprise will provide you with the solutions at reasonable cost. We have experienced personals who can install and advise you about your electricity and water supply with a warranty period. We have good quality solar products from North America and Europe. We provide services and sell products to individuals, organizations, institutions, private offices, communities, and government. These products are solar panels, batteries, charge controllers, inverters, water pump, water heaters, freezers, submissable pumps, and general solar accessories. Visit our stores at 48 Kairaba Avenue and Brusubi Highway, or you can call us on 7657-479-980. 8483-340-9400 or 635-9906. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. on Kerfatu Live. I'm Lamin Cham and once again welcome to our weekly current affairs program that comes your way every Saturday. This week our program will be more like news in review. I am joined in the studio by prominent Gambian journalist and in the next hour or so we will take a look at the major stories uh, of the week here in the Gambia and maybe perhaps just uh, a little bit from abroad. Journalist Omar Wali, who reports for BBC, Dutch Vela, among others, is with me in the studio. Omar, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Good. Mustafa Dabo, investigative journalist and uh, editor of Malagan, is here online. Mustafa, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Good. This week, we will take uh, a look at three major issues. Well, of course, we will start with the fallout from the uh, nominations and the in inauguration of the sixth legislature. What do we expect? What are uh, my panelists' perspective of the formation or the nature of the assembly? We will also take a look at uh, the latest audit report with uh, a damning revelations that as far back as 2017, the auditor had raised issues with how government money has been spent 
uh, by the newly elected government, coalition government at the time. We'll also go to the victim center to look at their fresh complaint. Do they have any valid argument as to why they oppose the nomination of Fawakari Tombong Jata, among others, uh, to head parliament? These and other issues we will discuss. So, gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you once again. Of course, I forgot that towards the end of the program, we will also look or preempt or give our projections as to what kind of cabinet does the Gambian people expect when the shake-up comes later this week. week. Suddenly, of course, we know President Barrow is uh, suddenly coming with a new cabinet towards the end of the week, or it could be even earlier. So we'll give our perspective and projections as to what it will look like. But first, Omar, you were in the National Assembly when the new legislature was sworn in, starting, of course, with the election of Speaker Fabakari Tombong Jata and his deputy Shidin Jai and all the new ones. Uh, first of all, you, you, you had an interview uh, with Fabakari, but let's go back. You were in the chamber, so was I. How did you see the nature of this legislature? as um, opposed to the, the, the fifth one? Well, um, it's an interesting one, and I think it's going to be interesting, considering, you know, as times on events unfold, mm -hmm. democracy is maturing, people knowing their rights, and uh, Gambians becoming more aware politically. Mm -hmm. So if you look, compare the current one and the previous one, you'll see there's a lot of difference. UDP had over 30, now 15. And uh, now more independent candidates are in, in, in the parliament. You have some there for Jame, some for you know APRC, at least two, <laughs> yeah. and we have the president. So, but it, oh, it even at the start of the whole process, mm -hmm. when Pabakari's name was mentioned, you can see that it's, it's going to be there's, there's going to be a lot of tension at the National Assembly. Yeah. To at least um, Doi MPs walk out because yeah. it seems like they can't stomach yes. Pabakari Tombong Jada and Sidin Jai, mm -hmm. and um, UDP Alajitabo and others were like, okay. They can't do anything about what Baro de dis but decided mm -hmm. to nominate Fabakari and um, Sirinjai as speaker and deputy speaker. And they were suggesting other names who were nominated just to be nominated members. Yeah. But you can see kind of a, like a frustration from the opposition camp. Mm -hmm. And um, I know others also will be defending Jame, whether we like it or not. The man is still relevant in government yeah, politics yeah. because he has more MPs in parliament, <laughs> more than even the breakaway faction, they don't like when I call it the breakaway faction, but yeah. that is it. So um, I can, I understand that it's going to be an interesting, and uh, Tumanjai also is another figure yeah. and so on. So it's going to be an interesting National Assembly. How do you see the uh, nature of the Assembly, Mustafa? You were there, there, was it? You were no, in there. I wasn't. But you followed everything. How does it look like uh, from the past one? Um, I can only look at it from the accountability point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's going to be the same. The same. Uh, yeah, in terms of the um, the interest in holding government to account, the interest in making sure that um, good laws are passed, I think it will more or less be the same. Because if you look at the the, the comparative analysis, the the number of people in terms of capacity that were in the nas last national assembly. Mm -hmm individually mm -hmm. they tend to have more experience they have more experience than these current ones like the likes of Sidia is not coming back uh, Umar's will will live brother uh, uh, um, Halifa is not coming back um, Sana Jawara uh, is not coming back uh, Usman Silla is not coming back a lot of people are missing in this current assembly. Uh, new ones come in and, and I hope that's also, I hope I'm wrong, mm -hmm. and that the new ones who come in would have more interest in accountability. Because the last national assembly is a failure. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, if you measure them in terms of accountability, what the PAC was able to, FPAC was able to do, what the PEC Public Accounting Enterprise Committee and the Financial Committee were able to do, mm -hmm. what the National Assembly as a plenary itself was sure. able to do mm -hmm. in accountability works, mm -hmm. you, it's, it's nothing to write home about. Most people attribute that failure to partisan politics rather than... Uh, any other thing. Did you agree that they were so mm. 
uh, divided on partisan lands that they forgo or forget the national interest? Omar? Yes, I think because uh, most of the times the National Assembly is drilled by, you know, individual and party interests rather than the interests of the um, electorate. So, and I think similar thing is going to happen this time around. So there are people who will be like, no, this is not going to happen. And there are others who will be like, okay, we want to put these things. So it's like a highly divided National Assembly. Already, you know, there is a confront, there is, there is division. There are people who think that Fabakari being the head and sitting jai, nothing is going to work. And others will be like, okay, we'll make sure that whatever we want it gets through. And, um, you know, Jam like I said, Jamia MPs also will MPs be there. So, yeah. and there are other, Tuma also will be in a, like a one-man one, one, soldier. One, 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 five, yeah. So, like Musava also said, mm. and, and I think some of them also don't understand the proceedings. Yeah. And understand, and, you know, you have to understand the issues that yeah, are happening in the country. So, like. you know, and these things start from the electorate. So, before you put somebody at the National Assembly, yeah. you know, you have to know who somebody who can, will be able to understand. You know, reading and writing is one, but comprehension mm. is another important thing. Important. So, were you, you disappointed having had the very swearing of some of the newly elected members? You could see some even struggle to. Oh, yeah. So doesn't that tell you that uh, the quality, like Mustafa feared, oh, yeah. would be a problem? Well, uh, yes, definitely. Some of them, you look at them, you know that they can't do anything. They will be, like I said, they will, it's just the wing will just carry them along. Just they will be raising their hands and that's it. But they, you know, you you put certain documents in in in, in before in, them. Before them, they can they. I, I don't think so. Yeah. They won't be able to do they anything. Yeah. To do yeah. And quite frankly, I do not even think we recognize the importance of the National Assembly. Remember. Like it is the primary driver of government policy, government development, and it's the primary uh, accountability mechanism. I'll give you an example. Uh, the kind of budget you pass determines what kind of development you're going to have. Mm -hmm. Because it's the budget that says the resources among different 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 priority areas so a national assembly member ought to be someone who have the capacity to know all those Understand things all what issues. is the priority yeah. where do we put the money where do we take it from mm -hmm. so that person needs to understand in greater depth what governance is about what development is about and knows what his roles are and if you look at accountability aspect of it that person also ought to have good morals. That's where the appointment of the leadership comes in. Mm -hmm. It also got to be a dignified person who is seen to have stood for justice in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's where good morality comes in. So you have all those myriad of issues that comes to play when you are selecting a National Assembly member. It's a big task to ask of anybody. Let's talk about how the leadership will contribute in shaping this legislature because leadership is very important we said from the beginning we understand Papa Kari may be a controversial choice like Omar you spoke to him even though he pledged and many people agree that no matter what you think of him when it comes to parliamentary even when he was majority leader he tried as much as possible to be really uh, I mean guided mm -hmm. by very very fair and uh, professional uh, way but then there are issues like now he told you that he still wants president jambe back um he still believed that the trrc so um, submissions and other things should be thrown into the bin um he still believed that uh, the 2016 election that brought the coalition uh, he said there are matters he he objected to right. so he has this He's a sworn enemy to the people you call Jammes yeah. uh, people. We know the relationship between him and UDP too is not That's quite not good. Not so, how do you think Fabakar then will be able to um, get everybody on board to focus on the national interest if, if, if he himself is such a divisive yeah. figure? Even though we, we understand that uh, when it comes to parliamentary matters, he's a perfect professional. But do you think he can, from talking to him, what do you understand that his uh, job will be in the next coming five years? Well, well, you know, when I, the first question was, um, how are you going to unite this National Assembly? Yes, he said yes. his, his task is going to be making sure that he brings everybody on board. But five minutes into the interview, you know, like the issues you mentioned, the TRRC, the, yeah. the, 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 the draft constitution, the Jammeh homecoming, yeah. and even cast out, still said 2016, Elections. you know, Barrow did not win you know, on a clean slate. So that statement alone you know that day 
Father God could have, you know, made a pronouncement that will bring everybody on board, even on despite board. the, you yes. know, the differences with others. Yeah. You mean but, he could have said, yeah, oh okay. no, what I have said, all have gone. Now I'm yeah. a new, I'm exactly. a new man, and I, yeah, let's want to go for We have our differences yeah. politically and so on, but yeah. here I'm here to preside over this thing, and I can't do anything without you people. Exactly. And um, along the way, you know, that that's supposed to be the starting point, but. The moment you said, okay, already these people, some some of these lawmakers made up that the opposition made up their mind that they can't work with him. Mm. So, but that opening could have been the best thing and said, okay, let's put that aside, aside now. and um, you know, let's think about the welfare and the well-being of Gambia and our electorates. But the moment you said, well, I'm not gonna accept. I'm, it. Even I'm even I don't I, I don't think even the president is happy with that statement. We'll be, no, we'll not be happy because yeah. you know this was a man who appointed. This is a man who appointed you to to, to be the head of yeah, the yeah. national assembly and. Mm -hmm. Casting doubt in the 2016. Yeah. You mean I, I can argue? I can agree that uh, he could have started uh, on a much better uh, footing, like uh, sending a, a more a reconciliatory message, tone, message, uniting uh, yeah. message to all of us. For example, even though what had happened, this is the National Assembly. We all come here for the country, and I will do as much as possible to, uh, you know, bring everybody united Ambo. for a common goal. He could have said that, right? But like I agree with you that President Barrow will not be happy if he, if Awakar started, you know, with this kind of uh, position, uh, condemning, you know, what he condemned before, and knowing that some of these issues will come before Parliament, it will not make uh, him to be very much, uh, like you said, acceptable to 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 especially people in the Parliament who have long been at loggerheads with him. So so it's like let me interrupt. You. It's like okay, you you don't want the com um, the report of TRRC. To be, you know, to be implemented, or you know, and and the and the commission and the draft constitution, mm -hmm. but you want Barrow to come home. I don't know how he's going to reconcile that. Come yeah, sorry, no <laughs> come home. I don't know how he's going to reconcile that one with uh, yeah. Barrow because no matter how it is, I don't think anybody wants Jamie home anymore because anyway. many see him as a source of instability. If mm -hmm. you bring him home, he's going to. So, uh, Jamie MPs want to hear something like that. We want Jamie home because um, I spoke to Al Mahmoud Jiba as well, and um, he said. Well, he's gonna, you know, put put forward a private member's bill to yes. see that Jam is back. And I spoke to um, Tuma. Tuma said, you know, the this fifty, the sixteen seats mm -hmm. that the, you know the private member bill put forward, to, you know, reserve sixteen seats for women and disabled people. Mm -hmm. so he's gonna, you know, continue with that. that Bile said he has no problem with the draft, but um, if they have to sit again and look at it, so even people within mm -hmm. Babakar is saying no. So it's like Bile is saying, okay, but we have to do one or two things before. Mm -hmm. And uh, like when Bar his during his first press conference, Barrow said, you know, he was not specific though, mm -hmm. explicit, but he said he's a fan of um, term limits. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what draft are they going to bring again yeah. um, before Gambians. And even if they bring the draft, is it going to is it going to be the retrospective thing? Because uh. or like like when I said I mean is it gonna start in 2021 or this gonna start in 2026 whether he also wanna overstretch his tenure yes, office? Yes, sir. Well, those are issues that will come there. But then, for, yes, um, Mustafa, what do you think for Bakar's leadership? Do you think it can uh, unite the parliamentarians to focus on national interests, or do you think it will rather push them to even more glorified partisan positions in parliament? In which case. Every every bill will be chaotically debated, perhaps no agreement, and in the end of it, the Gambian people missed out on good good laws like we did in the last legislature. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think that uh, Fabakar can also be a, he can be efficient sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, someone who also likes to play to the gallery mm -hmm. quite often. Mm -hmm. um, I've interacted with him often um, when he was the head of the park pack. I mm -hmm. was okay. going there, and I can tell you, mm -hmm. Fawakar's park pack, uh, most people would not know, is more efficient. Was more efficient than this. People said, despite than all the misgivings, uh, no, no, yeah, 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 he is yeah, a yeah. perfect parliamentarian. I wouldn't say so. Mm -hmm. I think he okay. has moral issues. Ah, well, but I think good. his park pack mm -hmm. was more efficient. Than the, than, the than the f pack and the PEC that is led by probably that, one of the most him. eminent Gambians. Mm -hmm. I don't want to arise. <laughs> okay. Why some controversy, so? but no, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Fabakar's park PEC mm -hmm. was ish, was writing report every year mm -hmm. and was indicting people. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when I was at Standard, we were we were yeah, doing exactly. stories, stories on, on park his PEC. park PEC yeah. and things they were doing. Yeah. 
go back to this park pack and uh, and if you are lucky, compare, if yeah. you are lucky, you see a report. So you, and even though, he was, majority, a report, even yeah. though he was majority leader, yeah. he knew certain uh, commentaries and recommendations yeah. can embarrass the government. Yes, and they were, still, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they were uh, taking their, submitting their reports annually to Jame. The and president. Uh, yeah, and things were being done, you know. And uh, you can go back to parliamentary yes, hands and yeah. look at their the pack pack report I see. Uh, so even though of course jambe was not jambe was above that accountability <laughs> oh, yes. uh, i remember there was a time when they were dealing with a particular uh, they were dealing with nawek yes. and they had asked nawek to shut down all the accounts and there is this particular account, account that and Fawakari was complaining 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 and someone said wow uh, that account is apparently at the at the state house uh, under the OFI and uh, it's at the central bank and uh, mm. that conversation. That <laughs> <laughs> so you are saying, yeah, well, as I mean, long he as can he play to the gallery, as, I mean. as long as it does, he's, it he's a good yeah. politician. Yeah. Well, the office of the president, yeah. Pawagar can really yeah, yeah, yeah. exercise yeah. oversight and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but well, he can be lead, he can be efficient if he wish if he wants. Yeah, he's a very good um, But the reality is that morality is the basis for all good actions do you think and it's the a sense of, of just morality or reputational damage that it's not a reputational that, no, listen, damage you know, no, no, listen no, you, no. you admitted yeah. mm. that until or, or only uh, or less on some issues that are you know involving president jamme and we all know president jamme i mean he wouldn't spare anybody who tried to challenge him even if you do, do your work right but you admitted that apart from those things papa function Professionally, no, no, you know, the image, the mm. reputation, not the I, moral issue. I, I think it's a reputation, mm. reputational damage that happened, yeah. yeah. And 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 you know, he's he's now a mature man. He, I mean, you know, when he went to parliament, he was you're kidding me, right? He was a matured man, yeah. He was a 30 years something now. He has he's an old man, he I was an old man, even that yeah, time. But he spent 20 or something years doing the same things, parliamentary yes. things, Charm, yes. Charm, I so think we would expect that he's you know. Perhaps we'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he will come now a changed man. I can uh, assure for, for, you that's not going for to him, happen. Forgive his early statements to Omar Wali. But no, I don't think it's, it's the, the last 20 years or so. I think it's all started after Jami vacated the presidency. That's where it all started. Because oh. because he presided, he is presiding over APR and most people are not happy with that. Yeah. And some of the statements, you can't you can say nothing hap did not happen in this country. We all know what happened. Mm -hmm. At least you have to be sensitive towards the victims and, and Gambians in general. Yeah, know, right. But you cannot sit and say, no, we made a mistake. Ad along the way, said, okay, you can, the, tra the, the truth commission should be this and that and that. I think that's where his problem started. Problem started yeah. Not when he was national assembly. He was a respected person yeah. until when he was handed over. Like somebody, yeah, uh, to, to lead the APRC. Mm -hmm. You, you see, I, I, see, you see, Fabakari had the most crucial accountability institution in the Gambia under Jame, which is the National Assembly, Public Enterprise, and Public Accounts Committee. Remember, that time they didn't separate the two. Yes. Now they separated yes, the two. Yes, yes. Well, one, the new one, one is headed by Halifa, I believe, yeah. and the other one, Marianne Denting, Marianne F. Park, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Marianne Denting or CD or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you look at Park Peck under this gentleman, under okay. Fabakari, mm. it was it was together, right? Mm. This was the single most powerful accountability tool in the National Assembly. Mm. And National Assembly happened to be the key accountability institution in the country because they pass the budget, they scrutinize the budget, mm. they hold every other institution to account, mm. right? Mm. Everybody is answerable to National Assembly. So, of course, how should Now, be? think about Jambe and the kind of ruthless corruption that Jane Commission exposed. Mm. We've never heard of it. Yeah. But then so the, it was never but, uh, but most such of, an most efficient. Of, most of that, yeah. to, to affair with him and, and, and to agree with you, mm. had to do with Jamme. And you yourself said, when it comes to Jamme, that's where for yes, 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 yes. Like that's, that's, that's my point. So most, most people also will be like that because you can't go into Jamme's mm. territory. That was dangerous. You see, you see I think, mm. um, and that's the problem I have with Gambians, and this is across all political parties. Mm. If Gambians are interested in justice mm -hmm. and they are interested in accountability, they've got to choose the right team. When I say the right team, you've got to select people who are not tainted, people who do not have a prior history of injustice and lack uh, of accountability. That's why me you know why? Uh, because when justice comes from not the right source, yeah. it seems more like an injustice and vengeance. Yeah. For example, 
if Lamin Cham murdered party, that Lamin Cham comes to preside over my murder case. Mm. Lamin Cham did not pay for his crime. Mm. Why is he making me pay for my crime? Justice looks more like vengeance and that's what is happening in this country accountability is not an accepted principle that applies to everybody it's it's a principle that is cherry picked and applied to individuals so depending on the circumstance the and the convenience of the right. person who is executing that accountability okay that's the problem and that's the problem with Fabakar Tombonjada's appointment mm -hmm. Fabakar happens to be someone who represents the worst of our past, mm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is that a guy. Is between January. That is, is where today. We that say January 2017 today, yeah. right? I, I may not necessarily think so because he passed. You know, Fabakar was Jambes, not Jambes most leading voice in the National Assembly. Yeah. They passed the Indemnity Act. Yeah. The one that indemnified the soldiers, yeah. right? Now imagine, for example. If TRRC report comes to pass, mm -hmm. and the justice minister, in fact, the last time I spoke to him was a week ago, mm -hmm. he still holds the view that they will appoint, they will implement the TRRC. Yeah, and, proce and prosecute right? some cases. He said it. Exactly. Right? If they are going to do that, mm -hmm. the third most powerful man in the country, mm -hmm. the one who becomes the president mm -hmm. if Barrow leaves and I said to yeah, leaves, leaves yeah. is far back. Third most important. That third most important yeah. man in the state. Yeah. Is Doesn't the one agree. who passed an act that exonerates soldiers who shot at students. Yeah. Imagine you are now wanting to prosecute that soldier wow. for killing students. students. And he knows, mm -hmm. I am not the only one to be blamed for this. Yeah. Even the third most powerful man in the country has a share of a blame in this. Yeah. Accountability, therefore, looks like vengeance. vengeance. You see, well, it I, looks I, like oh, I'm being targeted. Mm. And, fa and rightly so. So if people are going to, you see, that's why people need to, we need to, we need to have a conversation and determine what we want for this country. So Whether you, we want to do, do you this. you believe, Omar, help us here. Do you believe, as critics of Fabakar, you believe, and in some extent, Baron, that the choice of Fabakar as speaker, giving all what happened under him in, in Parliament, was a miscalculation? Yeah, big time. I don't think it's a, it's, it's a wise move for President Barrow to appoint him far back. Because of a lot of contradictions. Contradictions. Mm -hmm. He's a Marmite figure. You know, his past, you know, even during the, as the head of APRT alone. Mm -hmm. so I don't think Barrow could have bring a neutral person. You, you see, there is a lot of tension in this country. We mm -hmm. don't talk about it, mm -hmm. especially at the National Assembly. So you need that not only a unifying figure but a respected person should head that institution yeah it should be but somebody who's not tented with one way you, or the other Baro, Baro, i think the best choice for Baro, you know sitting jai could have been there the, 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 give me, maintaining that position 100 percent Baro. at least governments can stomach that a bit you mean serious speaker? No, 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 no. I ah, mean okay. speak a uh, city maintaining his position, being whether whatever. Oh, you know, whatever, he whatever he was in the APRC. Was, yeah, uh, no, no, in, in uh, MPP, in NPP, okay. hundred percent borrow and so on. Mm. And for Bakari, could be given another position. Mm. But um, you know, how is the how are governments going to view borrow international community? Mm. You campaign, you know, when coming, you promise all these. You know, do you think he probably think a cabinet position is more influential than the speaker? It's the other way around. The speaker is far more influential than the cabinet. Position. Well, like they said, in the event that the president and the vice yes. president is incapacitated, said, yes, certainly he will so come. So speaker as is more, inf is inf in, in, far in more, fact, far more influential than, than than any cabinet position apart from the presidency and the vice president. So I think you know, but this has been happening. Barrow made few appointments where he stumbled, and I think he should. I think I think sometimes you have to consult people before you put. Um, uh, certain individuals in certain well, positions. he said, he told me myself that his cabinet, mm -hmm. which we will talk a little bit later, will uh, will comprise mostly of his NPP and those who supported him in the coalition. So it's going to be rewarding people. I put it to him that we're at, it wouldn't be good to bring in um, technocrats. He said, there yeah, could be, but majority will come from my party and others. Uh, he said it because it is not uh, good uh, for you to look over people who have helped you, fought for you, and then look, bring somebody who was at his corner. That was his exact word. So he sounded but, like... Uh, but the trouble and the fear people have is that, um, you see, when he 
a point based on compensating people or maybe trying to settle scores yeah. Yeah. with opponents then of course we may end up having you know a government that will look uh, more like uh, an in, you know exclusive of his party or their supporters then it will be difficult to exercise oversight over each other if you all belong to the same club that's where the people fear is but um, I think it's now sounding like uh, Museveni who's <laughs> when he was criticized they asked told him that you appoint your wife your son your brother-in-law as minister and exactly. he was like when he was fighting I mean he was in the front line so he has to compensate the reward the compensate. family That's yeah. the so and somebody told me yesterday that even bringing Fatuma to Jawara like in the 1970 constitution said when you when you lose election at the parliament yeah the you can't be nominated that one has that, that changed though but that yeah so but it has moral questions like more or less um, somebody who's been rejected yeah. from going to the to, to the That's same you take her back to the same place. Yeah. Well, the people consider that to be an insult to the people. Um, they could have give, appointed her on another. And many people observe this settling of scores. Yeah, I think that so, is you know, mainly. So, so the fear of many people is settle, appointment, appointment based on settling scores and appointment based on compensation. Certainly, is what President Barrow should be very careful about. If, because there are people who are not NPP, who yeah. are not UDP or any other opposition, but they want brilliant. Yeah honest people in a right. government yeah. and that's what he should look after don't you think so i think that the appointment of a president ought to be if you are appointing people you ought to know separate the responsibility of the president mm -hmm. and the responsibility of a party leader and that is Which the is reason why in Africa. Uh, what is mm. the reason why we don't have normal political parties functioning in this country mm. because the secretary general of a polit secretary general should in fact not have been the presidential candidate well, let's because the discuss. secretary Jawara general Star? should be mm -hmm. the one in charge of the party. partisan politics mm. of a political party mm. now when you become president mm. you are no longer the secretary general of your the party, party. You should not you be. are the president of mm. the gambia, gambia the premier symbol of the republic mm -hmm. now that means your responsibility is to make sure your actions are guided not just by consent mm -hmm. but by the collective aspirations of everybody what? and that means things such as symptoms of low self-esteem like settling scores Score. like I appoint champ because I want party to be angry. To be angry. I mean, that's oh, a I little. It's it's Mustafa a doing of a little he, mind. He like, fought with me. I mean, if you get yeah, the yeah. government on that, that's where the problem is. That's why now the even thing though is, it's important to pick a team you can rely on, we know. But then yeah, yeah but but how do you define exactly. a team you can rely, rely on? Yeah. It's a team that has to be that has to be composed of people who have principles. principles people who serve the country and well mm -hmm. now this thing about loyalty to the president loyalty to this loyalty to that is not necessarily black and white it doesn't mean that if i am not npp i'm not loyal to the republic yes. if i am loyal if i am a patriot i'm loyal to the republic mm -hmm. you see you discourage soldiers to go into politics yeah. Is that an assumption that soldiers are not loyal no, to the republic? They, they, they are they loyal have, to the republic. They, they but so, exactly. But, but there are rules that they should not be. Exactly. Yeah. So this is this is the matter right. at hand. Now, if you are appointing someone to be the national the head of the national assembly, mm -hmm. you are not looking at an a, a political appointment as such. You are yeah. looking at an appointment that represents that is supposed to embody the spirit of the nation that's supposed to embody everything that is good about this country okay that's what it is about so yes. if you choose that for your cronies yeah. and the parliament the, 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 everything for your cronies i mm. mean that I, I, that, that country would be it, it would be from one and our turn to it to yeah. another our turn no, to no, it no. so <laughs> any party that comes to power it's our turn to it's eat. Our turn to eat. So you, 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 you yeah, yeah and the republic will right. collapse in the end because, mm -hmm. and if it does collapse, mm -hmm. it's not, you don't love NPP people mm -hmm. by doing the wrong things. Mm -hmm. You only love NPP people if you do the right thing because when the economy collapses, when the republic collapses, mm -hmm. Everybody, including the NPP people and your children, oh, suffer. Exactly. You see, so that is why you need the right people in the right place. Exactly. That's what manifest of love for country and for people is. And finally, including you your own people. You we will come to the cabinet. That will be our last it's our projections. But let's <laughs> move on to another topic um, in the news. The recent, widely publicized and talked about, land allocations to cabinet ministers and others uh, in the Brufford Bejilo area. We can say because. 
government is trying to say it is Bigelow annex mm, and yeah. not Bluford Heights, but then they border, whatever the case is. The government, through the Minister of Land, said, well, these allocations are normal and they followed due process and the government, uh, this land was forfeited to the government through the Mahoney Commission uh, at the beginning of the 20, the last decade. Um, and it was reassigned by government to civil servants, uh, including, of course, most of the ministers. Uh, we understand the list is more than what, what was leaked on, uh, I know, on, on social media. But the government is arguing that this is normal. The ministers, or whoever in there, are Gambians. They are entitled to government land allocation. But um, Omar, you wrote something about it. You seem to have objections. And so many others, like you had a lot of objections. Others said, well, OK, if you ask cabinet ministers or higher government places, share this among yourselves. What about somebody who is in, who is in Sarepate, who is in need of land? How do you think <laughs> you can easily and fairly uh, consider such a person? Well, I totally morally disagree. wrong or legally wrong. What do you think? Both morally and legally wrong. You know why do you think it was legally wrong? Because you know, because the ministers I, 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 are Gambians. Yeah, because yeah, ministers are Gambians. Yes. but at least these are among the people who are the highest paid. Okay. Look at our our security. Look at our, let's start with the security, the police, the, the police, army, the army, the immigration. Some of them, most of them, will work on. For until they retire, they, they can't retire. even have a plot they, of land. Oh yes, definitely. There is no housing scheme for those people. Yes. Someone who served this country for more than five, ten years, at least should find have a place called home. Yes. So be able to have a roof over his head. Yeah. But they are not thinking about those people. Mm -hmm. You see the struggle. Even you know, going to work, you struggle. Yeah. Coming home, you struggle. Yeah. You serve your country. You can You keep on renting until, renting you, know, until you, you retire. Even your kids can have a proper education. Okay. So I think the government should be thinking of allocating land to those people yeah. than ministers. This, most of these people can afford it. Mm -hmm. And why must government even provide land for a state minister? Who could, who can, who could have it? Who can yeah, afford could, it? Yeah, you can afford it. From pay, yeah, pay, allowances. Yeah, pay, allowances. Ex exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it's a, it's, it's a wise move for them to be, you know, kind of... And look, and, look, and look at the choice of place itself. Exactly. And, you know, this country needs parks. We need playgrounds. But we don't even have most of those people. Mm -hmm. So they're not even thinking about the people. They don't even put people forward. But it's about individuals. Mm -hmm. Like grabbing among themselves, trying to, you know, share, like I said. Yes. Next time, if you if you are not careful, wake up one and said Independence Stadium and Makati Square have been, you know, demarcated and said among themselves. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's a wise move. Look, so if you think it morally it was wrong for cabinets to share it among yeah, themselves? Yeah, come on, man. These ministers, why? why Most of them have compounds. Why do you have to get more, more they, than the when some people don't they even don't have government they may have lands uh, privately acquired for some but they didn't have government lands allocated to them and and they said that's the only exception from the rule like if you had one granted to you by a government you cannot have another they, they believe that all the beneficiaries there don't have government granted lands elsewhere yeah but it, come on it, it, you they, they're getting some other privileges mm -hmm. from the bodyguards we don't have a problem with that the yeah. oddlies the, 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 the pajeros and so on and so on. but this is a national property Mm -hmm. I think it should start somewhere, not them. They have, they have, and uh, they are they telling us they have been working throughout. Most of them have been cabinet for five years. They can't save money to buy a compound. They are, the, they, they are the, you are they are the, so. they, they are the, they have the fattest salary and the biggest benefits or allowances. So, so, so you think that people who are below that level should have been considered? Yeah, I think the police and the army, immigration, the army, and all those, those teachers, are the teachers, yeah, come on, nurses, nurses yeah. So, but why, why? Do, uh, and look at they're talking about less than half of the quarter or not even a quarter just a handful of people mm -hmm. so you forget about the entire population entire, entire thousands population. of people are yeah. in this in, in when you have about courses. seven or so in the list we that was leaked a uh, majority of them are cabinet ministers what i expect from this government was that it's like uh, okay we have over but they said there has been a practice um you know on the president in fact some said uh, dating back to president uh, jawara i mean if you look at Cape Point area, yes. I don't know by coincidence or by design, it used most of the properties there belong to Jawara's former ministers. Right. Fajara pipeline used to be top civil servants and government ministers. Jamme continued the tradition. In fact, I had in Bruford Heights, most of his cabinet ministers there had, had properties there. So 
It is a continuation of a policy that had been here. Many people are arguing. But whilst that was on, mm. at least social security was in, in tack at the time. Mm. There was a carnival house in the state. Yes. There was backward. Yeah, there was but no, that is not no happening housing now. things so for. So at least if you are taking five yeah. and you, 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 you providing 200, 300 compounds or uh, low yeah, income, low income at least we can understand. Even yeah. teachers are at carnival. Even teachers Even are some at carnival and yeah. backward. Backward. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, but I think social security is still doing that, isn't it? Well, they're, they're too young. But now it's too Go there and ask them to give right. you a list of all their land allocations in the recent one decade. Oh, that's and see if you will have it. Also have government. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, what do you make of it, uh, Mustafa? Coming to state with when you saw it, uh, the leaked, um, uh, I mean, list of uh, cabinet ministers have been, and this was as recent as April this month, actually. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Me, yeah. I knew it's quite bigger than this one. Um, you mean the problem is bigger than this? <laughs> <one>? <laughs> That's what you are saying. The allocations are uh, quite a little bit bigger than this one. Um, okay. Yeah, and you know, but it is what it is. I'm not sure I know what to say about this. But you uh, found it morally uh, justifiable that uh, cabinet, you know, they take care of. I mean, they have the last say in everything. And you find it morally justifiable for mm -hmm. them to be the top of the list of uh, the allocation of line at very prime and very expensive mm -hmm. post areas. Um, I think if 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 something like this ought to have been done, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, I think what we need to do right now is to have laws and rules and regulations that govern all of these things, including but that, but that, but and a there. policy like Umar is saying. Uh, giving land allocations or a better land policy for public servants and so that it's 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 something that is seen to be beneficial benefiting everybody mm -hmm. and not just anybody who becomes a minister because 20 million dollars it's quite a lot of money that that's how that's that's how a piece of land goes some of there. those pieces of land yeah some of those pieces of land could cost that that much so you know, if you think even though ministers are gambians they are entitled to uh, lands, but then it become morally difficult if they who form decisions yeah, especially should have this allocated among themselves. Especially if lands that are that belongs to other people or that were taken from communities and other people. Well, this is supposed to be a state land, they said. In the first yeah, place, it was a state the land. But then in this I, I know it, when we were growing up, what they told us was these areas are one, either they are either tourism development areas or they are what they call, um, how to call it, um, uh, they call them feature, feature development areas for schools, community centers, football parks, etc. But over the years, we have seen that they've turned to residential areas. Absolutely, all the TDA areas have been, you know, have been have turned to, and that is the reason why. Yeah. If you have any serious president in this country, mm -hmm. uh, this country has taken a direction where it's going to end up like Bissau. It's going to be a failed state where the corrupt. Mm -hmm. and the criminals it's already a criminal state mm -hmm. it has been on the jame and baro is perpetuating it <laughs> now no, it is a criminal no, 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 but it is a fact yeah. you can choose not to see it mm -hmm. uh, but it's a fact mm -hmm. it's a criminal state um, <laughs> if you, is too much yeah. and oh, if say, it happens in Bissau for state. example yeah i know a state such that, that, has, such that, that has been no? hijacked by you know criminals who are supported by by the state but we have but think about why are we talking about timber trade why uh, oh, do we'll we come have we'll come yeah, yeah so it's a criminal state it's <laughs> no, a state that argue. is in we, the hands we have of problems but at least we don't have the state sanctioning you know or, 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 no you're or, kidding me or, right or partaking in you know criminal no, no, no. activities the Cham. state itself prominently seen Cham. maybe through Cham, you see Hanu. what <laughs> corruption does yes is that it takes the state from authority and, give it to and vest that power in the hands of criminals, criminals. Okay. We, we, such we, that the criminals control the military. Yes, yes. they control the police. That's what happened in the. They I control know. the judiciary. I know, I know. They, when the country gets to that level, yes, I hope the not. Afghanistan, Bissau the, level, the, the, the Panama, Sibirola, <laughs> Benatema. We'll come to that. When it gets there, <laughs> yes. Yes. when it gets there, yeah. Even you, the selfish politician, no longer controls the control shots. Yourself. Even the head of state. When I mean, you want to himself. even do the right thing, they get you killed. Even the killings. You should. You the should. Killings that you know how Nino got killed. That's right. The killings in Guinea-Bissau were, were, were actually perpetrated. Go or, to. Go to. Go to. Go to. Go to. Take, 
take this road to Bissau by road. Yeah, I see. My friend and I went there on a reporting trip. Mm. They have checkpoints on the road. Criminals that are not state. Police, the state of workers, they, they st every checkpoint they stamp Bissau outskirt of Bissau, the capital. Before you get to Bissau itself, been there for eight. you have maybe six, seven stamps. I've not been there for and eight. every stamp you pay, the mm. meal, whatever meal, and, whatever and meal. The, the stamps you cannot read them <laughs> you have, because you don't know for the maybe they are and you cannot stop it because the state yes is now you shopped but even the mbalo fellow there why doesn't he have senegalese forces there okay he he, he wanted because if if he wants to do the right thing mm -hmm. the the state is not controlled by him or any other fellow it's it's a, that's what a happens to a laws. criminal state. Yeah, it's been, yeah, that's what it, it's, I hope you don't get there. Like when Let's look at uh, government's own effort that was in the news to cut down expenses. I mean, there have been a circular or memorandum which says now foreign travel ha will have to be checked. It has to be necessary. Um, you know, allowances on fuel and other things have all been cut. I mean, that was the latest move the government did uh, to cut expenses. <laughs> How do you find that? But why now? That's the, that's the issue because well, it's never it's never too late to do yeah. the right thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's never too late to do the right thing. But they could have they could have done this long time ago, you know. At least when government why? Because I understand some people are giving thousands of thousands, more than oh, ten thousand dollars uh, for what? Allowance. For what? Government for, because is nobody lives in Basse who comes to work to Banjul. Yeah. We all live it in Which maybe from Brikama within three four kilometers. Yeah, to Kafuda and around Brikama and Kuk. yeah. The how can you how can you exhaust that forty thousand in a month? Sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. So I think what the government should put a measure in. They sort of they sort of you know done this long time ago. From nine o'clock after working hours, don't use our car. Mm -hmm. um, all this necessary. That would be difficult. You know there was this vehicle <coughs> policy yeah, but that was adopted. Uh, well, that was proposed in twenty seventeen onwards, but suddenly it was abandoned. It wasn't popular. Yeah. The government wants to ride this vehicle to walk and then ride it to home and then to go to night uh, to no, night with it the so, car was so not it wasn't popular even among civil servants yes so because it, you know that's so the why government could not implement it no but i think if you want to go up to a party if you if you don't, if you, if you don't have a car you can hire a taxi <laughs> you don't use the country's resources for your personal errands at least i think five thousand ten thousand is sufficient enough for mm. some for a week or so even mm. five thousand yeah, six thousand is 6, too 000. much. Yeah. So even you could control the yeah, fuel allocations. Only Come perhaps on. estimated to just take you to work and, and back. back home. The rest you pay, you buy for yourself. But your wife want to go to market, you take them to market. Mm. You want to go to nightclub, like you said, beach and beach and other things. You want to take our government, government car. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. This is this car was given to you because you're working for the government. And, and if you and have a private Musa, before you, in fact, before I come to the value of those cars, Musa, how do you, how do you greet the, the announcement that? Government is not trying to cut costs by government was not cutting by, costs by minimizing foreign or no. overseas unnecessary no. overseas travel and no. for those list. of us who are following this news, government is not cutting costs. Even now, government is reacting to the inevitable, that is which is mm -hmm. that cash to lavishly spent will be short. Mm -hmm. Will be short. I see. So now they realize they are now. not cutting costs. I see because a cut. Cutting cost is a deliberate policy that is supposed to come from, come in good times, in good times not in bad times. In bad times. Now, the, th the reality of the matter is that yeah. uh, we knew Barrow had done, and I was at every IMF opportunity because finance minister is one person who does not grant interviews. Yeah. The only time you get him yeah. is when you go to IMF press conferences. That's the only time the one IMF to get them to organize. Mm -hmm. I see. Now I'll tell you this. I've asked this question several times. Yeah. I'm not an economist, but I have sense. Absolutely. Now, they've started... You have an economy where uh, COVID happened, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you knew your airport is saying... The country shut down multiple times, okay. right? Mm -hmm. uh, the borders were closed multiple times. Yeah. The tourism sector l registered incredible losses. Mm -hmm. The markets registered economy incredible losses. Mm -hmm. The banking sector, everybody was crying. Mm -hmm. You were coming from that 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 mess, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now, what you do because you were heading towards a political time. Ah, okay. So what they did was they went into they overboarding the economy with lot of projects. Mm -hmm. they, 
Banjul project is here. Whatever, yes. You financing that domestically. Domestically, from our budget. Right? Mm -hmm. From the tax revenue. Yes, money. Right? Mm -hmm. you and that's how much? You that's start. Mil what? That's uh, uh, 400 million, 400 million uh, a year, something yeah. like that. Yeah. How, much is, how much is the total? In, uh, to in total, it's supposed to be. Seven million. Dollars. No, it's now 40 million dollars. 40 million dollars. Dollars. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You pay in that every year. You, you started Hakalam. Yes. Yeah? Hakalam project. You started the Sankandi whatever. Yeah. So they started a lot of domestic roads, a lot of constructions to impress the political situation. Oh, I see. Right? Yeah. And it's coming back to bite it's because to bite. now mm -hmm. what's going to happen is you you've overboard in the economy with a lot of projects. You mm -hmm. need so much tax resources. The businesses are coming from the COVID era. Yeah. Yeah. They are not, they are they, not. They're feeling the pinch. Yeah. The tax revenues is going to be yes mm -hmm. it's going to be affected yeah. and if the donors are not giving and donors are not going to give you money for some of those projects no, no, because those th this, no. these are projects that you've started you, started you said you're going to finance yeah. for yourself for yourself right yeah so these are all things that so, are going so to that affect the, the mo that the, you think you buy new cars all the time all they the are time. buying cars all the time i mean and, and that's, that's what we even do. right now they're buying cars that they're buying the, cars every day that is the issue and look at the value of those cars you yeah. know the, 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 the sorry state of the government civil service that all our money is going to maintain okay. the people who are supposed to work for us yeah. exactly now, even at, the internet look everything now, like look at, look at it look at a vehicle if you're a director permanent secretary yeah. or senior officer you are driving a vehicle that costs three million dollars yeah. for example yeah. three million dollars you buy that for every director and pump secretary That's three million because dollars. you see and Champ, you give them sixty thousand fuel to maintain so all our money goes the, to maintain. the opportunity we missed in 2017 people. yeah developing the gambia it's like if you are if you if you are supposed to board a vehicle to be the karma yeah and you only realized you are heading towards Banjul mm -hmm. when you've got to Denton Bridge. Mm -hmm. The sensible thing is to take a U-turn and go back to Birikama. Mm -hmm. oh, we are going. We realized, Even though the we, realized we are heading towards a wrong direction. Mm -hmm. We should have turned. We are going. Now, the farther you drive, mm -hmm. the more time you spend driving, yeah. the more space you are, you, the, more time, the more space you are drifting. Yeah. Away from away, the away from reality, the real cause, mm -hmm. right? That is what is happening to the Gambia. We drifting towards the real cause. Mm -hmm. Now, development is a painful, uncomfortable process. Mm -hmm. When this country wants to really develop, mm -hmm. and patriotic people will sacrifice mm -hmm. for it, yeah. it needs to speak the truth to itself. When we came in 2017. Of course, everybody says, ah, yeah, they said the coffers are empty. The empty, coffers yeah. are not empty. But indeed, they were. You, yeah. We knew they were. Mm -hmm. I mean, we knew this country was being mismanaged. Yeah. We knew the mining, the money we're supposed to have from mining is not coming. It was, not coming it was give, going to Jamie's yeah. pockets. Mm -hmm. We knew Jambia was doing anything he everything wants. Everything he loved. Yeah, he liked it. I mean, these are facts. This is not made up, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to fix a, a real person who wants to fix, fix this, <laughs> will sit down and think thoroughly about the solutions, solutions and tell the citizens these are the solutions yeah. and this is not going to be a comfortable, a comfortable process we because we've to, done yeah, a wrong thing for far too, too long. long now we want to do the right thing exactly. this would change this would require sacrifice Sacrifices. that cut, cu cost cutting measures yeah. would have been introduced people would have put up with it yeah, the civil servants yeah. the vehicles that yeah. were being yeah. used we basically if you look at the Gambia government. Say, for example, GRA collects. They said they said twelve billion a year now. Isn't it? They've never collected twelve oh, billion. The highest they, they collected last year was eleven billion. Ah, it's okay. a, oh, I don't almost, know why public officers lie in this country. Mm -hmm. They've never collected twelve. Billion. Well, they said almost got twelve billion. Yeah, but a almost. Billion a month. It's not this. It's not. A billion not dollars a month. Yeah. So, for example, if you, if if GRA, for example, collect twelve billion. Now, if your wage bill. The amount of money you are paying for personal emoluments, maintenance of just ah, public offices. Check that all. If, if that is four billion, yeah. and it and it is, it's approaching four yeah, billion now. Billion, yeah. yeah, maintenance of just your people. Exactly. Just yeah. to maintain so, so, so people. We, what we are doing I mean, year in year out yeah. is to spend our money on maintenance of states. States. And us, we are not getting any service for it. Instead of having a company. Yeah. 
that does not make profit it, every it year create it's money either making profit. losses yeah. or create and you are profit. still paying stuff you are stupid yeah. like if you are a businessman you are stupid <laughs> like really yeah. you know what i mean You're not like making money but all the money is you but you are maintaining the company maintaining the company uh, exactly you, you don't go for it. yeah so, and so, so a nation cannot be in that, like that yeah 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 but in fact in our case we're making losses so we are on we being in, we are insolvent yeah like if you're a businessman, you stupid. Like citizens need to get up and say, look, this is enough. I know it's going to be if we have an honest leader. Mm -hmm. it, turning this around is not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. But when the people know, yeah. like it's like Professor Kiwizi says, when people know mm -hmm. that the sacrifices they are make is going to have impact on their lives in the future, citizens are known for sacrificing. For the development of that people die for their countries. Absolutely. Right? but they don't want to change it. That's the bottom line. So what everything you have is just rhetoric, cosmetic, cosmetic changes, changes, rhetoric, cosmetic changes, and it's not just NPP. It's everybody. It's everybody. It's there is not a done. single political party in this country that wants to change anything in reality. No, no, I mean, at least as far as their conducts are concerned. concerned. In terms of money, how uh, managing money is concerned. Leadership is how. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> because and that brings us straight to the I mean, recently publicized, uh, summarized audit by the Auditor General, um, 2017. I mean, I mean, revealing in 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 in, in really staggering. Uh, I mean, revealing staggering figures that have been withdrawn and used without approval, either without approval or, uh, I mean, things that are supposedly proposed to have bought and are not bought, etc. It brings to the fact that this thing started, like you said. In 2017, I mean, the coalition government came and found that our, well, they said our coffers were empty. But then, instead of sitting down, like you said, to implement measures that are going to, uh, I mean, help us um, recover or at least avoid those kind of things, uh, I mean, according to the auditor's report, they went on a spending spree, in some cases even without approval of the uh, um, accountant general. Well, um, we have to read the full report, so I <laughs> won't go for the much into that. Yeah, that's what that's basically the government was spending. Yeah, the government is saying. So, but mm -hmm. how, how did they spend this $669 million on, on, what, on what? It, I mean, there have, there have been a lot of things. $17 million were supposed to be on vehicles. Uh, there have been eight. Uh, only seven was found. And so many other uh, expenditures that didn't go according to uh, procedure and approval. I think you're talking about the report, but I think... I, I think government spends so much money on transport. It's like vehicles and so on. Why don't we fix our public transport? Well, like absolutely. buses and so on. Yeah, Where absolutely. every 10 minutes a bus will a leave. A bus will leave and come back. Um, yeah. Westfield to Banjul, Brikama to Banjul and other places. Mm -hmm. Because most of the civil servants, civil servants, they work in Banjul. Why? Why not? Be before you spend three million or so on 20 to 30 prados or so exactly you can million. walk into a, a man company in german and you know have negotiation with them at least you pay in 10 years or so years we used so to have man here yeah, man, if, man. if man boss stops at in salikane if man boss stops at our garage yeah. we know it's it's one o'clock yeah. like yeah. it's so yeah, on time yeah, we are so professional and yeah. the roads were so bad yeah. but it's yeah. so on time yeah that was GPTC. and it's so efficient this GPTC is back GPTC when i was young yeah. yeah that's true we have the six o'clock boss and I mean, you know, the, 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 the problem we've just outlined is, is what is the reality. Yeah. We spend a lot of money okay. maintaining people who are supposed to be working for the state. If you check a permanent secretary, a director or whatever capacity they are, driving a vehicle that costs the state three million dollars. How many vehicles can be bought from that? I mean, Doi has said this so many times that, look, I mean, out of three million, how many, how many even mini four wheels can you get there? I mean, someone will be driving three million vehicles and will be given 60,000 fuel a month. And, and what, do, and what the hell does that man do for the state? Nothing, absolutely. And you look at their performance. I mean, and there you, are you so many of them. Yeah, and, and, the and the government wants to tell us that they are serious about cutting, despite, I mean, cutting, cutting expenditure. Despite all these Prados and the 60,000 petrol and coupons, ah, whatever, the country is still not moving. And um, what are they doing? So we need, uh, I mean, so, so the, the thing is, I, I think uh, audit reports, people need to just be cautious about it. Uh, because, for example, auditors, even auditor, auditors, they look at rules mm -hmm. and the violation of rules. Yes. Sometimes violation of rules does not necessarily mean yeah. money was stolen. Yeah, but it was right. You know, there's yeah, misappropriation yeah. and outright corruption. Yes, yes. <laughs> so that's there, are, there are. There yeah. are. 
um, and also different 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 responsibilities are um, um, assigned to different different institutions are included in that whole audit um, and also the current I saw a lot of political parties PDYS people UDP people uh, NPP people, everybody trying to spin this in your way, right? That's right yeah. But the question to ask is, the National Assembly is the institution that passed the budget. Yeah. The National Audit Office report is the primary scrutiny of that budget. That budget. How comes mm -hmm. this is becoming a subject of conversation in 2022? Yeah, exactly. We have a National Assembly, Assembly. in the Gambia, in the Gambia. For five, got, years, for five years, for five years, the most having the most prominent mm -hmm. National Assembly members ever the in the history of this country, mm -hmm. and this is becoming a subject of conversation in now, 2022. In 19, in 20 April, 19. April, they got it in 2019. That's what I'm talking about yeah. now. Uh, and, so, and so, so this, this is the media this is, just got the media is just getting it. Now. I had seen a copy of this way when it was a draft, oh, uh, last but the, the, the thing is. I mean, National the 2018 is worse than this. Yeah. The 2018 is actually there too. And the parliament have seen all that. 2018? Yeah. It was with parliament more than a year ago. And no noise. No, no. no. <laughs> because the parliament, polit these political Politics. parties don't care. For, I mean, really. The, the only thing they care about is uh, UDP just pick it and say NPP did this uh, and NPP and picks it and UDP did it and PDY picks it and they, no one cares really. But, but if they do care yeah. <laughs> they were in parliament accountability is not a serious business in this country. I've done Banjul project for example. Yeah. I have taken the audit, the report and the project document of political parties. I mm. don't have to mention political parties and their and yeah. they told me this we are heading towards the election. This is a popular project in Banjul. I mean if really if you know so I think the question the thing boils down to our lawmakers do they understand even this some mm. of the things put before them yeah because this is another thing and uh, secondly Gambians also I think we should have to find time and 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 these are the most important things it's not about how when our monies are as managed as and, and spent some, sometimes and the national assembly members who have oversight because they are the ones who primarily you know agree yeah. and approve these budgets now the budgets if this Ex explanations come back to you I mean they must be the people who should raise questions but do they understand this? that is, is an issue uh, the I mean, National Assembly started. members are not going to raise questions no they could no. raise you questions. don't understand Champ, I have I have worked they in could. corruption for some time in this country and I'm telling you the guy complaining on Facebook when you start doing a story about his friend is the guy who calls you exactly that's the reality yeah. in this country yeah. like it's across the board and the, the, why do you think it's easy for the Gambian to say X, Y, and Z was bought? It's because that's the language that's the in language this country. Not, yeah. It's so easy. Like they don't even know that buying someone is like selling that person's dignity. dignity. It's, it's more than just saying, ah, that person was giving money. money. It's, it's that person's dignity, that person's voice, his decision. Mm -hmm. That's what you bought. Yeah. It's so easy for them to say it. X, Y, and Z is bought. That tells you the thinking of the Gambia. Gambia. Like, this country, people are not much different. Mm -hmm. I had an interaction with a colleague. Um, at this time, the, the, uh, the, there, there was, they had a conversation, civil society guy, they had a conversation with our National Assembly, this past National Assembly, mm -hmm. around the National, the, the, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Mm -hmm. And some of the National Assembly members said, the part in that document which suggests that which says that you know you cannot take bribe from public you cannot yeah <laughs> okay. and they said that's a problem like but um kuruso um, so so any society down like a balloon like even our language itself is corrupt yeah, yeah. yes even uh, yeah. it is, it, it, uh, our way is condoned. Yeah, the very not. values that underpins a republic or meant proper maintenance of it's state corrupt. is not even in our lives. Our lives. Yeah. yeah, we just carry Bible and the Quran. Mm. That's it. For a Gambian, that's enough. Mm. 
And that's the reality. No, 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 I'm serious. If Gambians want to change this country, yeah. they will need a serious conversation. That's the reality. I mean, go online and see. UDP does not talk about anything beneficial to any other person. UDP picks and complain and pin it on someone. Somebody. NPP, the they only they convenient only truth. The, the PDYs, is the same. Everybody is just the same. Mm. Yeah. You only talk when, uh, yeah. So if it if you speak the truth and it's going to give you the political capital, capital. that truth is not for you. Is not truth. <laughs> so that means I condone mm -hmm. anything that is definitely yeah. not in the interest of my. Yeah. So that's point. the reality in so this country. I mean, no one cares. The politicians who had the biggest say and responsibility yeah. to guide the nation on its right path are busy uh, arguing and you know trying to settle scores politically and we forgot the general interest of the uh, i mean the country that is that's just, that's been the situation exactly. let's move on now um finally of course we before we come to our projections in the cabinet um you had an investigation uh on mulligan just published today about the timber trade i mean uh, we know of course uh, this timber trade is very much at the heart of the customers conflict in the later parts that is um I mean, in the report uh, that I've said summarily, you try to, uh, I mean, reveal that, uh, in fact, uh, it is not just uh, the Casamas problem, but it is it is a problem that's affecting both Gambia and Senegal, and and even officials are complicit uh, in in this kind of thing. So, what is this report trying to do, basically? Very, very, very. Um, briefly, what 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 have what has been the outcome of this long investigation? So so it's the same thing. Like it's the same thing Gambian and Gambian officials do. Uh, Gambia government gave Senegal. If have you watched the independent the speech? Independent speech of Macky Sall. Ah uh, no, I missed. He it. made it's, it category four. April four. Uh, April fourth independent okay, speech. Okay. He said, and in clear terms, mm. we can no longer accept timber that is fell from Casamas to be exported outside our border. And it said that is the instruction to the military. And that's the word they have in there. So now that, Gambia... Let's, let's take that again. You said President Sal said they can no longer expect timber from They can no country. longer accept. Yeah. That's the word. Yeah, he said they can no longer accept the felling of... Yeah. Tree that is fell in Casamas to be exported outside of their border. That's his... That's his own a, words. That's basically what he his said. own words. That's he said that is the instruction. He said, in that fact, he said it this way: yeah. the instruction to the military is clear. Mm -hmm. We can no longer accept tree that is fell yeah. in Casamas to be exported outside our border. That's wow. the military interaction. That's what the military. What is the implication? That is the. Inter that's what they are having in Casamas. Yes. Now the thing is, Gambia government gave Senegal a base on our soil to fight that same. What do you mean that we found we we put a base for Senegal? Senegal is soldiers. Ecomic. Senegal but they came on an arrangement of Ecomic. Yeah, but okay. okay. Rhetoric. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cham, you see, me, no, I'm no, not interested no, in rhetoric. No, 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 no wait. I know, uh, but then we boss. have to put things in the context. Yeah, yeah, and we have to. Um, we have to. No, yeah, 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 yeah. No, you, I'm okay. driving towards something. So okay. it, no, you, no. you are interested what in rhetoric. I'm not. The implications of this okay. argument. Okay. Let's stand with that. Okay, let the Umar take <laughs> speak that part. Maybe I. Maybe I. No, listen. You said. You said. Economic forces or bilateral forces? No, you know. You know. You know. In the past, there was this. Uh, claim that Senegal and Gambia had a bilateral agreement under which Senegalese troops can be here or vice versa. Although in many cases, always no, the other way around, Senegalese troops presence in the Gambia. But of late, we had now now know that all the troops are in our country from Senegal are on the economic. Right? <laughs> are you, talking, okay, about, are you okay. talking about the hot pursuit or yeah. no, or the bilateral? Because no, that the hot about. pursuit is was in what well, is it's one thing but this other bilateral forces is another thing mm -hmm. although they put it they, they like they cut put them under the um the economic and so on but my, i my, don't my, think economic my, are involved in this hot pursuit i don't think so well what economic is economic may not be involved in the hot pursuit but yeah. Senegal you see pursuit. if you yes if you had waited for me to arrive to that point no, i know the point where you are going the thing i am trying to say no, the i agree the, the implication of Comic Senegal being present here, especially at those key positions, means that you know what the president was saying in Dakar about this timber trade. Yeah, I mean you you are say, basically saying that they are having troops in Senegal, uh, in the Gambia, under whatever guise, 
implemented exactly what the president but that's what i am saying yeah. what i am trying to say yeah. senegal forms part of ecomic mm -hmm. and what senegal's policy was from the beginning mm -hmm. was to station because senegal considers rebel senegal according to senegalese force senegalese government mm -hmm. They consider rebels financing to come from few sources. Yeah. Among them is cannabis as cash crop, yes. timber trade, yeah. and vegetable production. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now this is some of these vegetable things. Production. Not yeah, they do they do grow vegetable. stuff too. No, yeah, but but right. basically this is this is okay. this is what usually they generate money and, and now uh, charcoal charcoal production. Charcoal. charcoal. Right, yeah. So if Senegal's idea is if we station uh, soldiers in the Gambia they are intercepting charcoal coming from Kasamas. They are intercepting timber coming from Kasamas. And we are, or, you know, Senegal is already in Bissau. Yes. And in Bissau, mm -hmm. we are also doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. What we are doing is we are squeezing water. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The, the lifeline, the, the thing that sustains them, Kasamas. we are taking it from them. Kasamas. In the end, yeah. they can no longer sustain or finance the rebellion right mm -hmm. that is the plan original plan mm. now so for me as far as i'm concerned i think this current activity they were forced into it by two circumstances you mean this current this the, the, military, the current military, the military, military activity i think they military. are forced into it by two circumstances mm. one is public opinion in senegal which is as a result of the four soldiers killed and yeah. saving capture that's one uh -huh. an ego war the second, the first and the most important one is the frustration from the Gambian side of the border. The Gambia government is allowing that same timber that fell in Casamas mm -hmm. to be exported in the Gambia. Okay. Now, that, this is not just from my own work. Mm -hmm. It's from everybody's well, work. Of course, yes. BBC have, did the same thing. That, uh, EIA said the same thing. Well, Gambia government's own investigation in 2019 by a timber thing. panel said the same thing. Yes. Now, that's the hypocrisy about it. You how much how much frustration and Senegal has about that and and, and and you know, yet we are saying that the two governments are all at the best of relations. You have to you have to understand, Cham, diplomacy works in, in a in openly and, and behind the scenes. Yes. Yeah. And of course Senegal is not happy about it. Okay. I was, I spoke to Senegalese soldier. I understand. I spoke to a Senegalese soldier and his language was, you know, Gambia is not a failed state. I don't even know why we get to that. Mm. That is why when, when we arrest timber, we give it to them. But what do they do with that timber? They come and park it at Farato. Yeah. In the end, they just the look around if no one is looking. <laughs> and they yeah. said, you know, this timber has been here <laughs> since the last ban. We need to move it, approve it, bump, and it moves. Mm. Illegal timber. It's illegal to move it in the Gambia, according to our laws. So let me interrupt you there. Yeah? So it's like the government of the Gambia... Yeah allow Senegalese to station their military in a Gambian territory, mm. mainly the Casamas and West Coast, not to allow timber to come in. So when timber comes in and they intercept it, they will hand it over to the government of the Gambia. The yeah. same government will allow its ports yeah. to e export that out of the country. Exactly. That's, really what that's, the, thing. Is that that's the thing. Why is it that if the Senegalese government go all the adult land, you know, uh, to try to situ an arrangement on the economic for, for, for the military to police that, why are they still allowing officials in Gambia sanctioning the competition of Because the Senegal can't. You, you want Senegal to summon Barrow? <laughs> or, or, or define or our why or our or, uh, why or why our, why our environment means that they can't do anything why about do that. Continue to perceive that the two governments are the best of friends. They are the when best of friends, but diplomacy works that way, Cham. That's okay. how diplomacy works. You All can, right. you know, you can always engage. Because Senegal still has incredible lot of interest in the Gambia. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And anything that is happening in Kasama, Senegal needs Gambia's cooperation, cooperation. to either to, 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 to end that conflict yeah. and to end that menace, menace that is happening in, Sena in yeah. Kasama. Yeah. They, they needed Gambia's cooperation full time. So they, Without it, they can't do it. So they will have, so they, they they will have, have to, to play safe play and safe take it easy here and, and there. But it's not because they are not desperate. Uh, so what 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 is what's according to Malagan's research report now, what does it indicate now as to the level of this trade and in terms of relationship and in terms of uh, the effects it had on Gambia? I mean, I think Malagan covered the uh, the suffering that's uh, really happened to Gambians. Yeah, know, yeah. If you go to Fony, mm -hmm. 
Umar went to Balen. Maybe yeah. Umar can first tell you what happened in Balen. I yeah. went to Balen. Um, mm-hmm. I went to Kapa. I went to Bujinga. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to some of those villages around. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen the suffering. I mean, in fact, I when I came, I wrote a, a, a short Facebook post yeah. to publish it. Um, but of course, uh, the editor thought that uh, maybe this is we may need some quotes from this. Let's. Of course. So I, 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 I will help but the, the suffering there, know. you have people whose roofs yeah. have been splattered by a bullet, like yes. there are holes all over it, yes. and they can't live under that in the rainy season, but the yeah. last time I went there, Kappa, yeah. I asked Mr. Baji, uh, I was here in January, your roof, and it's the roof is still the same, and he said, well, I have no more money. The guy, ha- the guy can't change the roof. He can't afford it. He, he, he can't, he can't, can't do it. that. And the, the, the thing that is causing that was because the, the Senegalese were pursuing a timber truck. Mm-hmm. That was and the January rebels incident. were lying in wait. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. The ambush ensued. Uh, four soldiers died. Uh, seven soldiers were captured. Yeah. And Senegal did retaliatory, retaliatory attacks. attacks. Retaliatory right. attacks displaced 13,000 people. 13,000 people plus. Absolutely. And they all based around the Fonye area. Uh, only about less than 500 people are from Casabas. The rest are from the Gambian side. Gambian. So it's effectively de- destabilizing the Gambia. Primarily, what they do is, well, you know, timber is coming from... They said the timber is coming from Guinea-Bissau. Mm. <laughs> now, Guinea-Bissau does not have scientists. Yes. They don't have a scientist convention right now. Mm. And they, they are part of scientists, but they don't have a scientist uh, perm- office, mm. permit right now. Mm. Uh, CITES is the, it's a permit that you need to require, you require to move rushwood. It's an endangered yeah. species, right? Mm. Now, in fact, when I went to Mohammed, Mohammed Jaita, the director of the Department of Forestry, the first thing he told me was, I told him, but Mr. Jaita, you know what is shocking? Why would Bissau has ports? Mm. They wouldn't transport it. Then. Why is it that businessman who has the opportunity to export timber from Bissau brings it to the, to Gambia, the Gambia, take it to the trouble of transporting it through Senegal yeah. to the Gambia, yeah. to export it through the Gambia's port? What is unique about this? Mm. He told me, you know, Bissau does not have scientists. And I, at that point, I felt insulted because you are telling me Bissau does not have proper licensing to export timber, yeah. but they can bring it to the Gambia. Yes, Gambia. That is not export. Yes, 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 yes. You, you see, now this is the ridiculous nature of the thing. So they, what they do is, these guys, when they get smuggled timber, they go to Guinea-Bissau. You know, I told you earlier in the, this yes, program yes, that you can get anything in Bissau. In Bissau. So they, they get stamp from Bissau, mm-hmm. certif- so-called certificates of origin. Mm-hmm. It's like the Kimberley process, process yeah, how yeah. it's been defeated, defeated by yeah. smugglers. Yeah. The international regulation Kimberley process says, well, you can't export conflict diamonds. Yeah. You get a conflict diamond, you go get a certificate of origin from Zimbabwe or South Africa, yeah. and you, and you move your diamond. Your they are doing the same thing. The authorities knew it because when I went to the, uh, the, uh, Mohamed Jeter's office and I told him, and he was about to hand me the certificate, so-called certificate of origin they are getting from Bissau. And he, he, the first thing he said was, it's a f- this one is a photocopy. Mm-hmm. I said, but Mr. Getty, you're supposed to have the original. Where is the original? He said, no, go to the smugglers. They have the original. You are the approving authority. Smugglers, the smugglers, have, the smugglers have the original. I went to the smugglers. One of them said, well, yeah, we have the original. This is authentic. So I told them. Give, send me a copy of the original and tell me the issuing authority. I will verify from Bissau. Mm. One month they couldn't do it because it's not there. Mm-hmm. So what happened was now they would get those certificates of origin and I reached out to one of them. They are mentioning some certificates of origin. They are mentioning one guy called Constantino Ferreira. Mm. He's the former director of the Department of Guinea Bissau. I reached out to him. He told me they are lying. I left Guinea Bissau, the Department of Forestry in Not 2020 mm-hmm. and some of the approvals are, they are sending you guys mm-hmm. It's 2021. 2021. I could not have issued it. And meanwhile, we are also implementing a moratorium. Yeah. yeah? And so so all those things are coming in place. So I went back to them and I said, okay, if you are getting this uh, timber from Guinea-Bissau, now let's suppose I believe you. Which border is it coming through? Because this is a cross-border investigation by yeah. me, a Senegalese, and uh, some guy in Switzerland. Mm. Right? I said, okay. I have a colleague in Senegal, and he's going to Casamas right now. Mm. Can you give me the border post that this timber is coming through? Sure. We will verify from Senegalese custom. Mm. 
and also meanwhile can you give me custom payments you've made in senegal you can't pass timber i spoke to our embassy in in Guinea bissau because i wanted to verify through many sources and i told them can you move to is it possible to move timber from Guinea bissau to the gambia one of them told me well you know when ali ujambe was here they bought uh, a bed mm. a bed yeah. we had they they wanted to confiscate it we had to they had to speak to senegalese uh forestry officers yeah. to allow a bed mm -hmm. to pass through kasamas so to, come. to come to the gambia that's how timber uh, how, precious that's timber that's is for senegal. senegal you are telling me senegal allows a truckload of Ka timber rosewood to, 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 no. to ply through kasamas no, come, come to the gambia not and go to our ports mm -hmm. uh, and that you've not made a single custom payment in senegal because they can't show me a single so, custom so basically payment. what you've discovered is that it is not true that this timber is coming not only is it not true yeah it's from Kasama, not it Kasama. is not true and our authorities know it's not true yeah so it could only come for me from Kasamas. exactly yeah. it could only come from and even whereas it comes from Guinea Bissau, it's smuggled which yeah. means makes it illegal because our law says yeah. the 2018 environmental act says that you have to show, show certificate, certificate of origin, origin. And custom payments made to that country of origin. That yeah. means the timber has to be legal. legal. If the timber is not legal, it yeah. could not be legally exported through the Gambia. So your report basically highlighted how mm. uh, how complicit is the authorities in the Gambia. Our own government in, in is our yes. own government. Yes, uh, in helping driving the timber trade. You mean with government cooperation here, it can be stopped. You see, ta or ta or, if or, we or if minimized. We, you see, it's basic economic principle that when the when there is a quantity so much of something, mm -hmm. the prices go down. Down, yes. But now, if we flood our market right now yeah. with all the timber I've found right now, as we speak, the timber that are filmed around town and it's still here, mm -hmm. in the, there's warehouses and other, it's over one thousand worth of container timber. Wow! If that is not too small, mm -hmm. right? If that's not, I'm not. Uh, well, I'm, I, I, I don't like risk an exaggeration at all. An underestimation, yeah. Yes, and if you flood this market with that, mm -hmm. timber price will go down. We will use the timber, and we would have been sustainably using the Senegalese forestry. I met one of the smugglers, even though he declined, he didn't want to talk to me. He said he is not going to grant me an interview. Well, we had a chat, and what he told me was, "You wanted to stop this." I said, no, well, that's for the government to stop. Yeah. This is not my job is to bring what is in the dark to the light. Okay. I can't stop anything. Yeah. It's not my job. Mm -hmm. Now, and I, he, he came with some distorted rationalization. You know, you know how many people benefit from this? I yeah, said, that's, that's, that's I said, I said, you see what you are not seeing. Mm -hmm. You are driving us to a point when we will not even have timber for roofing in this country, in this country. because timber is coming from a place, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Now, Think of it, rosewood and all these other mahogany now oh, that they've le finished in the Gambia, they're now going to customers to yeah. cut. Think of it. Some of those trees take 20 years to mature. If you are cutting, EIA investigation said they've cut 1.6 million trees in the last one decade. Wow. If you are cutting, let's say, even say 100 trees yeah. in 20 years, you and you are planting trees. nothing. Are not planting. In 20 years, you are going to exhaust trees every oh, no. other place. So our, right? Our and what's going to happen <laughs> is that now you have it. Like I met one young man, very brilliant in Fonia, and you know what he said? He, tell, he told me, in fact, this, pro this is not even sustainable because they will finish it someday. Exactly, someday. So if this is what you are priding to have give employment to people, mm -hmm. it's not a sustainable employment. employment. It's going to finish. It's going to finish, and very so, soon. So what do we do, Omar, here, to stop the timber trade? It starts from, from the business to the government. Like, I, I was in Fonyi, and I interviewed this guy. I said, why are you suffering? He said, because of the timber business. I said, but don't you think Gambians are complicit? The Gambian businessman, he said, no. This timber belongs to the Senegalese the people in Kazamas. Mm -hmm. So if they cut it down, and Gambian people, you know, they come and buy it, mm -hmm. there's nothing of it. I said, no, but the law says nobody should fell a tree. So someone, the person who fell that tree, and that person who leaves Gambia to go and buy, they all they all committed the same crime. Mm -hmm. But it seems like most of the people don't understand. Um, 
they think is normal when Senegalese cut down the trees, Gambians can buy, the rebels, the separatists, whatever they call them. Yeah. But government, you put, like I said, you put the um, um, Senegalese forces in the Gambia just to seal that border. Mm -hmm. But you are allowing your ports to be used mm. to, to export those things. Yeah. So there's no need. I Th think that's it's, the irony. Yeah, it's, it's better for you to t even tell Magisal, take your people out of my country. I think what Senegalese can do, they don't need to intercept these things in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. You have a there's, a, there's a porous border, fine. There's a long border between Gambia and Senegal. Yeah. Put your men there. Don't allow anything to come to the Gambia. Whatever yeah. you confiscate, you keep it in Senegal. Because but once that has been the problem. You forgot the, 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 the problem with the um conflict i mean the senegalese forces cannot get into all the corners of the casamos forest because of the presence there of the rebels but at least the so that's where the problem if they can police this thing in inside senegal they would have done it they wouldn't have any need for the gambia you don't need to be all the way in zigan shore and other parts just around belling that but they be were the belt the, the belt right but they were there trying to stop the trucks and the truck went into the rebels and they got shot well that is it yeah. so <laughs> at, but it's not gonna change anything because you have a handful of like a, 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 a platoon in in biam mm. those people can't stop they can they, they there are routes they can use without coming to biam so yeah, they can come to the gambia i mean you know it's, it's even, even a in, lot of money in Yamana, well, in you see I, I i tell people and it's probably now a cliche because i say it all the time mm. if someone has bread has a gun and is fighting to have a bread mm. if you're going to take the gun you better go with bread mm -hmm. Right, because that's what he wants. So you these know. things. So <laughs> if people timber is big money business, these mm -hmm. people when they go into the bush, they spend three thousand mm -hmm. dollars on thirty pieces yes. of, of timber, oh, yeah. right? Three thousand in average. That's what smugglers told us. Yeah, in average, that's one hundred fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. They and get then, around twenty-two thousand dollars on this. Look at that. Twenty foot container. Mm -hmm. Twenty-two thousand. Yeah. Now, that's big money. The, the drivers get and the amount cost. of bribe they pay the based on the amount they told us and yeah. the calculation and that's corroborated by the state investigation it's just about one thousand dollars fifty thousand that's paid in bribes the amount of bribes they drop at the checkpoints Check. to make sure it gets to the ports, to the ports. right so you have how much to spare? Let's say around. You still have a balance of. You still have seventeen thousand, or maybe or sixteen thousand to spare, yeah. right? Mm. That is why even when you arrest them. Because the environmental law, and that's another problem they saw and they neglect. Mm. The environmental law says you can pay thirty thousand on a container. My God. So Dallas. they allow yes, thirty thousand dollars. They 1, allow. So that's yeah, so they leave that law there for them. For themselves. So you 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 know you come you you they confiscate your timber. You just walk around. Your boss thirty thousand. Yeah. You pick your bag and you but go. They return your timber to you and I you think export that's it. The thing. The timber now, that is the, seized the cannot, thing is, shouldn't be returned. They, they return it. That's the problem. We is. have seen I mean, timber the, that the, they've returned the, to them. But the one thousand, uh, sorry, the three thirty thousand fine or whatever, <laughs> does it mean the, that the, the, the seized property should be returned? You know what is yeah. interesting? Ah. They have a CITES bill, which is prescribing one hundred fifty thousand on a container, one hundred fifty, two hundred fifty thousand on a container. Mm -hmm. And a tougher sentences, mm -hmm. tougher sentences, one hundred and fifty thousand, and tougher sentences. Okay. Since twenty eighteen, yeah. they have their new act in twenty eighteen, meaning they knew there is a problem of lesser sentence and lesser fine. Mm. So now that site is built, they put it under the carpet, I see. and they pass their act twenty eighteen. Yeah. They leave the site is built there. What does that tell you? They knew what is happening. Yeah, they knew the problem. They, they refuse mm -hmm. to stop it. To stop it. Now, they, if you go to them, they will say, "Ah, you know, these people, you can't get a timber moving. That no one can stop this." Da, 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 da. I've gone to one guy who told me that mm -hmm. no one. Then let's give up on the country. Yeah. If 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 no one can stop it, corruption is there. People take money. No one can stop. It. You know the Gambian. One person, in fact, told me you are dealing with a Gambian. Even you, you wouldn't finish this story. I said, <laughs> "Okay, watch me." So, there's now, the, so basically, what you've discovered is that uh, the timber trade is thriving because the Gambian authorities are condoning and perpetuating and helping, abating its threat. That's precisely the point. And one day or so, we will get into friction with Senegal over this. If Macky Sall's pronouncements are anything to go by. Yeah. Absolutely, because you will not get in, into friction necessarily with Senegal alone. Mm. 
in your own country. Yeah. Because what people are seeing, the timber traders, the dealers, they are not based in the bush. They are in the Gambia. They are not the one with a roof that is has all holes of a bullet on it. Mm. No. It's someone else. Yeah. Good. And so that's someone else. Those two have the capacity to take up arms and I defend see. themselves if I the see. state fails to defend them. Someone who has no, nothing to do with it. Someone who has nothing to do with it. Imagine an old that's, man. That's, Should yeah. the rain comes today, the Alcala of Kappa cannot spend the night in his room, in his house. Fifteen thousand other people. Yeah. yeah. His his solar panel on his roof. Yeah. You know, has been bastardized by a gun. So now, wh what do you think, finally, what do you think uh, from talking to these people in Fonyi? Because this, the, f the fear of insecurity still remains. I mean, there are people who are still reluctant to go back to their houses. Because, because what rebels do, you know that is coming from the Senegal Kasama's experience. Yeah. The rebels, they put landmines. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Yeah. When, they know, when they know these guys are coming and they are going to they are going to um, there's going to be a problem or there's going to be an attack anytime soon. Mm -hmm. They plant landmines. And those landmines, they, they affect villages, yep. the communities. Mm -hmm. So if you go to some of those communities, you may think, oh, of course, uh, we need to be careful with the rebellion too because along the border in the Gambia, families are divided. Mm -hmm. So there are loyalties. So, on, so even in the long on, term... But we just need to be careful with some of these Even things. in the long term, you don't expect these families to go back to settle normally now. Well, they can go back to settle, like mm -hmm. I was in Baleng, but I don't think they'll be able to go to the farm this time. The farms cannot go? No, because well, they can't till the farm. Um, there are, like Mustafa said, there are landmines. Landmines. And hundreds of meters away, there are Senegalese forces there. Mm -hmm. These people don't want this rebellion, our people in Gambia, but they have no choice. So it's just like trying to manage with the rebels, the separatists. But, but because if you say no to them, yeah. they will come after you. I know a guy who lost so much cattle. They they fled during the gun battle. They you know they got yeah, into left, Senegal. Yes, yes. So now even to go and pick those castle knots, they can't it's a do problem. it because you don't know what is going to happen in the next five minutes or so. There are landmines all over. So people are suffering. The government is sitting down. You talk to them. I think they should they should get these people out of the country. The economics should just move out of Gambia okay. and tell Senegalese to have their business. They don't. We have nothing to do with this, and they stop. Mm -hmm. Gambian businessmen from timber dealers timber. from getting to Senegal. Yeah. And this would set an example. That like the thirty thousand. What what is thirty thousand mm. in Gambia? Absolutely. Yeah. Nothing. Because you are endangering the lives of thousands of thousands of people. Imagine ten thousand people displaced in, in, in just one region. Mm. People's education disrupted. Yeah, disrupted. There are schools. So school. I know of a school so called Janna uh, is still locked still starts on down. So what is going to be, the, what, what does the future hold for those people if the situation continues like this? And, man, and because of that, the national examinations have to be postponed. postponed. Yeah. And some, I'm telling some, you, yeah. Some mm -hmm. people send their kids to skill centers <coughs> because they feel that they can't get education. He said, he told me mentally, psychologically, it's not good for, for our kids. Mm. So we can't keep them in this border village. So, send them here. So, 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 Mustafa, do you believe that the problem has to do, as most Fonyinkas believe, um, the, with the presence of economic Senegal contingent in the area. You see me, I'm a bit cautious uh, about the security situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a security expert. Um, I'm interested in accountability issues, so I speak on corruption issues. Mm -hmm. Now, if me as someone who works in the area of accountability, mm -hmm. my starting point would be mm -hmm. first is to let's not be a criminal state. Let state cannot be involved in criminal activity. Mm -hmm. What is happening in Senegal mm -hmm. under Jambi and now under Baro, it's criminal. Mm -hmm. State cannot be involved in a criminal business. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Mm -hmm. That's for a responsible state to do. No one should even tell you that. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the first point of action. Mm -hmm. And it's the honest thing to do. Exactly. The second thing is to say, Senegal, look, we can work with communities. You see, Gambia and Senegal, they have a unique opportunity where the, whether it's from Gunjur right here up to Wuldi, mm. the settlements around the border, they split. Colonialists recklessly divide these two yeah, countries. They're, they're, they're so the you, even in Fonyi, mm -hmm. you have people who are in Balen and their, fa their yeah. farmland is in Kasamas, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so, so families are divided across the border yeah. in such a way 
that it's it, it's so you mean it's easy the person you think is a gambia so gambianness and senegalese whatever yeah. at that border mm. it's quite a fluid thing yeah they don't even or relate rela- relate relations that. takes precedence yeah. over nationality yeah. Because your uncle is in the other side, they don't care about you the are at the other side. Yeah. So you, you you see what I mean, and that's the same thing in Kiang, in in yeah, Buli yeah. area. In, so all the border settlements are like that. Make sure the customers is opened up, whether it's Fonyi or Kiang or or or, Kabana. or, Kab, or Wuli. That area of this country needs to be opened up, both sides to trade. Mm. So that there is a there is a road that leaves right from Combo South here, yeah. Uh, yeah, around these places, and I'm told someone told me there that you see those Navek high tensions. It yeah. came all the way to Birikama. Yeah. Now roads can actually go through all those areas, yeah. open it up, yeah. and roads can also go from Fonyi area, Kiang yes, area Kiang into Kap- Kasamas, so that villages and towns and everything are linked, are linked together. Yeah. And trade flourish, mm-hmm. help people restore the environment. Yeah. This investment is not going to be much, and it's productive. Like I said, but if you want to take gun from someone and the pro- person is fighting to of, have bread, pro- provided take him bread. Provided, of course, there is peace. <laughs> That's where the but there will be peace because yeah. what you have in that country, hmm. like people are, if Gambia and Senegal genuinely hmm. are interested in solving the customers' problem hmm. and the marginalization. Hmm. And, in and stop the customers' problem. Yeah. They are going to approach it through a dialogue. Mm-hmm. Customers is not entirely involved in conflict. Yeah. You only have there are areas that are not affected. Exactly. Well, in fact, well, big settlements in customers mm-hmm. are not affected by rebellion. Yeah. Big settlements in the way that it's Binjona or it's Sikis, it is Sikis, where, the, or, it is where yeah, the resources. Yes, exactly. Uh, now, if you want to open up that area, mm-hmm. any of the area, because it's not just Fonyi that is affected by the timber. In fact, now, the landing sites even, now even have Yaman, all Yamanar, Yamanar, uh, uh, Yamanar Sare Umar, yeah. all those, like, it's all over the place. Yeah. In fact, it's more affect. it's it's there more yeah. than here now, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So, so you have to take a, but I don't believe in the thing that uh, Gambians are, it's the nature of Gambians to be corrupt. You cannot <laughs> stop it. We can only <laughs> add, no, no, no. no. We, all right. We, Gentlemen, we go to the final part, of course. Uh, we, we, we discussed about uh, the kind of legislature, of course, we um, f- expected, with, with, you know, within the next couple, of, within the next five years, given the nature of the, uh, uh, I mean, elected, uh, the group of people elected and the leadership, we talk about Baba Karitom Monjata, how uh, potentially toxic his uh, regime could be at, at the head of parliament because of the history he came, he has between the uh, various groups in the assembly. Now, we are moving on to give our projections to the cabinet and i want uh you gentlemen to to help me here okay first of all the cabinet will be in place we are hope officially of course no later than saturday and when we come back it will be 30th april so we think that on or before the 30th april the national uh, the cabinet will be appointed so there have been a lot of speculations some of them have since been squashed um Nobody knows what kind of uh, cabinet president is coming with, but he said that uh, most of his cabinet positions will go to members of his party and the coalition partners that uh, fought the December elections with him. He said there could be um, technocrats, yes, he said, but he, to him he said loyalty in politics is very important, and that's why he is going to give uh, the majority of the jobs to his people in the party and the grand coalition. So let's go ahead. First, Vice President Dr. Aisatu Toure, feminist, vocal feminist before he comes to politics. Uh, he, her critic said, well, not much has been heard from her or in terms of pragmatism. Um, some said it's not, in fact, uh, a very good inspiration when it comes to politics and pol- I mean public speaking etc etc do you what kind of score do you give to her in, in potentially her chances of uh, remaining in cabinet 
60%? I think 60%. You know, you can expect anything from Baro. So, I, like you said, I don't think he has a... See, he's, not, see, he's no more a political heavyweight. Mm-hmm. When you look at Baro's government, cabinet now, I think yeah. the most important person there is Hamad Ba. At least he has... We, we can come to that. Why okay. is it? Because she and okay. Hamad are still the... Well. Um, uh, they are the longest serving original members of the uh, coalition 2016. Oh. Uh, you, you, you know, uh, so... Well, I would say 50-50 then, I said a tour, right? 50-50. Yeah, even if they're going to maintain her, yeah. I think they might be, you know, reassigned, reassigned, reassigned some, some, not some the vice president. I don't think so. Mustafa, mm-hmm. Vice President Toure, staying or going out? I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> you because uh, the problem is I don't know what Barrow's, <laughs> what Barrow is Sorry, saying. Yeah, but, but I, I don't know what he's you see it's difficult to yardstick say to so speculate if you don't know the yardstick like yeah. no but I mean, like what does barrow what what what, what is barrow's measurement uh, uh, you mean <laughs> you, you mean you mean <laughs> that's not bench what, what is, is barrow's standard? Standard? standard yeah but but knowing what you know of him and his style now you yeah think, for all yeah. you know something can doc, be the next doc, vice president <laughs> doctor 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 Toure, <laughs> you will give you will give her stay 50 percent or 60 percent who yeah. dr Toure. You think she will stay or go to out? retain her position? Just an opinion. I don't know. I don't think she would be fired. Uh, maybe Baro likes stability. <laughs> ah, really? Yeah. Stability. He but likes stability. Whether that stability is harming him or not, but he just likes the. And I'm not even sure whether. Are you sure the cabinet will be announced this week? Well, yeah. they said the 38th. That's what the government spokesman and all this. Well, said because you see, the local government election is coming. But he, he can't wait for that. What? You, can't, you can't wait for that. He can't wait for that. No. I don't think he can. Because the government, you, I mean, the country needs to be serious and yeah. get to But work. the country is already serious. No, it's not. <laughs> I, I, no. The, is the so, ministers are ministers. Okay. They are not any no, less ministers. They, they are the ones who really wo- help run all these decisions that we are talking yeah, about. But the ministers, the current ministers, they are, are in are, place. But the president himself told us that's for the temporary basis. Yeah, but, uh, well, it doesn't matter. As far as <laughs> we, we are concerned, <laughs> I mean, the minister of environment, the minister of petroleum, the minister of uh, works, the minister, are in place they are the ministers. Okay, let's legitimate. Let's, but he made us believe that they are going to go, and 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 very soon. I mean, according to the government sp- spokesperson, so, by the 30th, we should have a new cabinet. That's what we've been told already, and that's official. So. You don't know what will what for me as far as I'm concerned, except you post borrow an existential threat, you're you will going, stay. You're Are you saying any, all the you're not going anywhere? No, but I think he's gonna reward some certain l- individuals. Let's like, talk to Hamad. Uh, let's talk about Hamad Ba. You mentioned Hamad and Aisatu are original members of the coalition twenty twenty six and Hamad we saw was very influential you know, and and and, and was in fact very important to Barrow's politics. You think he will go or stay? There have been issues of course, um, uh, in in the way the tourism sector was <laughs> managed, even though he he's he, I mean he 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 him he himself came out with some laudable initiatives and successes, but there have been issues. But his importance politically to Barrow, uh, do you think he will stay or go? You know, as the Mandingas will say, "Asayma solila barungula." Solila barungula. It's a sacred cow. You mean it's a sacred cow? It's a sacred cow, right? Oh. Because with the with the four MPs at the National Assembly, certainly yeah. Baro will need these people if you want to push any other thing. Yeah. So I think you know people were worried about him initially, mm. but this parliamentary election kind of make him. But he lost one there, you know. He lost a seat in Sabak Sanjay. Yeah, yeah, but that's at least, but yeah, five. But he still he still has four. He's more relevant, okay. you know. At least he has four. Yes, that's more it. than even e- existing APRC, APRC and, yeah, and, and even GDC. Yeah. So I borrow want to my want to um, reward APRC guys because, mm. like he said, coalition partners. These are his new coalition partners. Yeah. And some of those um, briefcase pri- briefcase politicians yeah. who we, they know that call, they can't win. They can't even pass the nomination, but decided right. to go in so that they can get. They all went and hung on to Barrow. Yes. I don't know how he's going to reward some of those people because you cannot pile up the yeah. pile up the parliament, um, the cabinet with some all those people. At least we need we need some. He, he said he's going to reward people who fought with him. Yeah, reward can come in many ways and forms. At least some can go for somewhere like he, you know, governments and diplomatic Yeah, cab- cabinet. So, so you think Ahmad will stay? Mustafa. You think he will stay? I'm talking to you. Yes. You okay? Yes, I think he. Mustafa, I think will Hamad stay? I think he's gonna Hamad, stay. Yes. Hamad, he will. He will stay. Hamad is will. Baro. Baro is Hamad. Yeah. Ah, well. What about Musa Drame? He's, he's been in the, in the eye of. He's a very controversial figure, and he's in the eye of the storm of late. 
What is if, mo- what is what has been his controversy? He's been well, controversy. Yeah, one of the most controversial from been, uh, been, from know, nomination. Everybody at least doing everything that Baro wants. Well. <laughs> Everything, everything controversy. Material, political material wise. Ah, yeah, yeah, his politicians look for people like him, but again, you don't want to be, you know. You mean Hamad and like Hamad Bai is very close to the president and you think the president because will I'm I'm what I'm thinking now is like Barrow is gonna look for people. It's not about someone who will go and sit on the radio and start shouting and misleading people. Okay. You have no political capital. He's ah. not gonna maintain you. I, he want so? no, come on, why why do you why do you have to maintain someone who cannot bring ten people? You want to get someone who wants to, who can bring people, the likes of Hamad Ba. Mm. At least he can fight for you, can help you, can back you at the National Assembly. Ah, I see. Others are doing more sacrifice. Like Musa has been very he's a very controversial minister. So <laughs> let's see what's gonna happen. You think he will stay? Well, I suppose. Who is that? I don't know. Musa Rahman. The will keep him. He, he keep will him. he will stay. He's a, he's a ah. Mamurin guy, finance. Um not very much the darling of uh, many people critics of the government mm. and you know all the kind of things uh, uh but like mustafa said he he he, he managed his way uh, quite impressively he, he talked less and he seemed to be the uh, let's say the mr fixer as far as budget and things are concerned for mr Barrow. <laughs> do you think he will go well you know i think there is already uh kind of a should I say a little bit tension among the ministers mm. because if you remember during the presidential campaign yeah a particular minister was saying they are the only ones who are talking yeah Hamad and there Bart, are others who do not want to Bart take responsibility the so should be politicians politicians so if you well, are you what are you doing what are you put under the table so mm. you, that's that's the question you ask so if you are there you are minister and minister and uh, i'm doing more than you i think that's going to also that, that's basically standing on political platforms some people are better than each other for that Hamad Ba is very good at that but Mamburi could be good in fixing the books and you know getting these things for the president. so he may be equally important to the president in that aspect um, well yeah you think he will stay hopefully Mustafa? I, think, I think he's gonna you t- yeah Mamburi. you think Mamburi will stay well not so by Barrow standards, he did anything wrong. <laughs> Everything is Barrow standards. Uh, well, yeah. It's Barrow who is choosing. Information. <laughs> Ibrahim I mean, he's got himself enmeshed in a lot of politicking for Barrow and NPP in the, in the West Coast. Although I don't know how much of that left after the National Assembly election. Still, but, I think so. But he's been very much now in the heart of the NPP politics and very, mm. even in the government, he's, he's, he seemed to be the, I mean, the, the man doing all the talkings and doing all the right things and the right imaging for the for the presidency and for the government you think he will stay well with barrow you can he can do anything mm. he doesn't care who I you are i think silla will stay silla will stay because yeah. um what is happening now barrow got new friends and for him those are more relevant to him than some of these people within that is the oh. aprc farbakari and others Come on, yeah. Oh, well, well, of course well, yes, well, yes, because the look three, the, the, mm. the, the the local government election is coming yeah. and there are he so you mean Barrow's focus? Well, like he himself well, said, of course, he, he said he said loyalty is very important. Yeah, so he, he wants to you want to have his focus is get he's thinking of election, even in appointments, thinking of of course what he's gonna political that, gains. Yeah, well, political gains. It uh, does this. That is the starting point. Oh, so he want maybe he wants to get KMC. He wants to get West Coast region. He wants to get, and uh, for him to get that, he need the support of some of those people. Some of those. Imagine if um, um, Bakari Baji was not in the race, Rambo would have won the election. Mm. Or if Rambo was not, because either way, either mm. or, yeah. or if these people, if two of them, one one platform, would not have been there as the mayor of KMC. Ah, okay. So, you know, West Coast, the same thing, from, from block to other places and routine. Yeah. And at least no matter how bad the situation is, they also have some following. You can't take that from them. Mm. Yeah, many we are not expecting them to win mm. in, in greater Banyul area, but look yeah. at, at least they, they got two in Serekunda. Whatever they lost in four yeah. years. Yeah. By loving you, will stay or not? He's been, he's been a man. Uh, mm. Barrow believed too much in infrastructure development. He said that's more important than anything else. And by loving has been busy. Um, I mean. Uh, Which, by the way, is what is collapsing the economy now. That's collapsing the economy. Know they would be how, what how, has, how instrumental <laughs> has he been uh, useful in, in terms of Barrow's, uh, Barrow's rating of him? You think he'll stay? He told me he knew by loving from reputation what he has done at, at gum walks he was very impressed when he last spoke about by love you think he will stay well 
But you know, you have Baros Tanada. Um, well, it is, like he said, he rewards people. I, maybe he might stay. You know, I think he's supposed to. He's think he should think about inclusive government. Yes, that's and right. You, some of them, some of these people should go home, and you bring people. Bring people, and, and, yeah, and you need know, to. You need know, to. This country need to. Move need to rebrand yeah, the image, image of, of the government. government. So he, you don't need to. He will have to. He will yeah. really have to work on that branding the image of the government, government and, and, and in yeah. doing so he has to do away with some people oh, yeah. who for one reason or the other have uh, have been tempted you know pass whether it really or, 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 or well, what, perceived what, what, bra what brand can you have that will rebrand Barrow himself <laughs> <laughs> uh, Barrow is the brand the <laughs> well I know what he can do he can do himself a good deal of uh, I mean, uh, I mean, service by yeah. trying to the second barrel. He, uh, bring a group, you know, that he can really change with those wow. ones. The two comments <laughs> of Adam Abaro. And um, wow. the other prominent person I want us to discuss, yeah, uh, in the in the in the assembly is uh, how do you see the well? Those are the ones that are not prominently seen. The Badara Jews, the Claudiana Coles, the Ami Favores. Do you think they will come back? <sighs> Maybe. You know, it's, it's difficult to predict. There, that. Are, there are names yes, in the rumors about higher education. That I don't know. Higher education, yes. It's been it's been rumored that, um, I mean, but I've talked less politically, that is it. He yeah. seems to be very much busy. Well, Barra is a very he's an, he's a professional a academic. level headed man also. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, you don't need some. And, and well, you know, from what, from what we've just said, uh, most some of the. Some guy people are very little. Most of to the government out. members feel that. Ministers should be more active in politics. politics. He is not. Uh, but what politics? Well, that's what's coming is. from some other background. Yes, I mean, one can come from other background. Whatever background. So you can't. So, but but you, if people, the, people if, have different but capacities. Yard, but if the yardstick in Mr. Barrow's circle of friends is who brought, who brings more, uh, more political, uh, I mean, capital, uh, people like. Uh, but but if, if, if that is the case, if then in if, in that the is, if that is the case, then. He will have to fire all the ministers that are coming <laughs> from Banjo. Well, yeah, you mentioned what he about lost all defense, the seats in defense, Banjo. Defense, I think that man. How has very popular is he? Some of those are not even in politics. <laughs> well, yes, they are. Yes, but then yeah. you so think he will someone like Ibrahim is coming from a political background. Yes, he's a political animal. Yeah, he but was in politics. Yes, almost been since been he left chiller. journalism. Yes. yes. Yeah. Fine, so you there think? are those who are fine, minister of fine, defense. Fine, wow. I don't think so. I, maybe he might want to, you know, reward, you know, these, well... There are a lot of uh, issues. Of yeah, uh, issues there. So I think he, he might want to maintain some of them, you know. Or might yeah. he go for somebody somebody more uh, of a, or probably more strategic or correct in, in terms Mistakes. of the reforms that, well, that are much much expected and delayed too much. He can, he can bring anybody. Mm. He can get rid of anybody. I no. think defense and security is where you would borrow would have a radical shift. You may change that radically. You think, I think so? That, that, I think Barrow so. is going to appeal. That's where he is going to have more APRC thinking. Oh, you think he's going to lean on APRC for that? I think so. That that might be as controversial as the speaker choice. The speaker choice but that's Barrow's mo. That's how he operates. That, that I mean. brings me to Shonko, the Interior Minister. I mean, everyone was surprised when he was called back to interior yeah. minister. Uh, you think he will stay? Sonko has been a loyal servant there. Well, he's been loyal. Yeah, loyal. Yeah, Not public. He was, uh, Sonko is the, it's the kind of a person you borrow wants, likes, needs ah, to I keep see. the system. Somebody who will say yes, sir, yes, sir, and that, and no other things. But yes, sir. Yes, sir. Doesn't does move not, any country. He does not go to. Yeah, Baro, Baro is not about moving the country. It's about keeping the <laughs> status quo. <laughs> and this That's country, correct. no one cares about moving the country. I mean, otherwise we would have had a disruption. Absolutely. Mm. Because the system as it is, is not fit for purpose. Mm. We would have had it collapse and build a new one. Environment, we talk about all the issues in the environment sector, the forestry and those things. Yeah. Diba, you think mm. uh, Diba will stay? Well, you don't see much of him politically, yeah. though, political platform. So. He is well, NCP. He's NCP, yes. Yeah. He's NCP has oh, only oh, two people, Majanko and Majanko. But Majanko so far, Majanko have not been given. He's the leader of he, NCP. His style yeah, of politics is different. He's not been nominated. I don't know. Something's been kept for him. Could could he could, could he be nominated minister? like what? He's not been nominated into parliament. Who? No. Majanko. He may his. be he may be going to foreign service. <laughs> <and become a laughs> oh, <laughs> it can never get worse. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
Oh, 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 you know, you don't need to be and say, okay, come, you, you there, South, you know, no. You can bring on board 100 people without yeah, being on a project. Without I, being think, even I think that's the, that's the strategy at that point. How about Fafa Sanyang, um, um, petroleum, energy, whatever you call it. Um, yeah, you, you have been following know. petroleum very well, Mustafa. I mean, you think the minister did a good job then? Sure. Fafa Yeah. You wear a barrel, you should keep him. I will keep him. I mean, he has done some few good things. That's a specialized, uh, specialized should, If he has done good things, we should be swimming in petrol dollars by now. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but this gum petrol saga and all the things that are yeah, unresolved that has given a bad reputation. Gum petrol, yeah. Government. Uh, yeah. But that's not his fault. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, this may not be his fault, but you know, uh, when it comes to sacrificing people, I mean, people, yeah, presidents yeah, do that, that all the time. Yeah, mining, I would put mining that on also. him. Yeah. Mining I'll put that on him. But if you put that on him too, that means you are putting it on Barrow too. Because. The guy mining is Abu Akar Jawa. Ah, so you have to, he's, he's, he's the man always opening Pandora's boxes all the time. Well, but that's the reality. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Jones, which so. minister do I skip? <laughs> Did I, think, I think the, the energy minister would be there. Would he will be, be there. there. What about Tangara? Foreign affairs, very important. He doesn't do any politics, but he's very respected uh, diplomat. Uh, what do you like Baro likes Tangara then. He likes him there. <laughs> <laughs> he's, so, a, so will stay. He's, he's a consummate diplomat. He's <laughs> <laughs> a consummate diplomat. Who <laughs> says that? I we haven't had much complaint. That. No, Baro did not say <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean Tangara. <laughs> I'm just saying. Tangara could that stay. Word, yeah. I mean, uh, well, he, he seemed to be doing very well. Respected in the ECOWAS and uh, African Union and other very things. Well. He, I don't know. Oh, okay. well, what, what the only person mean? I should criticize him is Sam Shah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> maybe it's a lone voice, perhaps. Oh, your friend. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so maybe friend. it's a lone voice now. So <laughs> it's my friend, too. Oh, it's your friend. It's my friend, so too. So, yeah. may stay, even though he's, he's on the plane every two weeks or every day. Every, every week. Oh, well, that's yeah. the nature that's of the nature foreign ministry. Foreign ministry. Yeah. I think you need some of these ministries, ministers, you need, you, you need, you need you stability. Need, you need stability. Yeah. yeah. You continue to. You need exactly. That. Because yeah, like, like this thing weeks, kind of get um, stopped mm. and then somebody has to start somewhere. Yeah. And with the coming of thinking, Gambia thinking of hosting, which is very unlikely. Yeah, yeah hosting of the wise and other things. I think they should tell us what is, what because well, it's just, just few months ago. You away. know, for, for me, I'm more interested in the development project. I think project it's better. That's why yeah. I'm more interested in than who whether it is coming here or not. Mm. So I, I don't think Tangara also, as you are saying, did exceptionally well. I mean, mm. I, I didn't have, I didn't hear much criticism. So or, yeah, or, well, or that's no because such, that's because scandals. People don't things. talk about those foreign <laughs> but, service that much. Oh, but scandalous! But there are a lot of things happening. Scandalous diplomatic. Uh, <laughs> there are a lot of Chum, things happening. Do, have, do, 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 do we even know the, some of mm. how the, how things work foreign? Our foreign, foreign policy. Uh, for example, what, is one, no, no. what is Gambia's foreign so policy? What is it? Yes. Uh, well, we, 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 we are we, 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 we not congratulating or criticizing the Hutu somewhere. The, 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 the Hutu rebels. Hut, no, no. The Hutu in Yemen. The Hutus. Yeah, the Hutus, and then condoning, you know, no, it's like what, so, or, or so keeping quiet. Yeah, I did, but I did for example, in Russia, we, we abstain from voting to I, get them out of the Human Rights Council. Yeah. I did something on that. Like, Gambia government, it, they, they kind of cut it away. Mm. Like you, you do, took the Myanmar government for mm. killing the Rohingyas. Yeah. Millions of them are displaced. They're in, they're in Burma. Yeah. We, we, but China, we, we spearheaded their course in the yeah. international. China is doing the justice. same thing yeah. uh, to the Uyghurs. And they're Muslims. Yeah, yes. They are not, they're not even Muslims. Muslims. They are human beings. Yeah. They, they have been sterilized. They have been mm. sent to the education mm. camps. We they're quite about that. Tanga we have did not say much about it. Yeah, we have ties with it. Mm -hmm. There is a fighting between TPLF and um, the, the federal government yes, in Ethiopia. Ethiopia. They quite about it. Yeah. Um, two white people are fighting. What's your business in it? They're Ukraine, pounding Ukraine, each Ukraine, and, Ukraine and Russia. They voted. Yeah, we t you talk about uh, <laughs> my man. My my mind comes to the uh, I mean Minister for Justice. Now I, I mean Mustafa. I mean he's the one who 
inherited all the transitional programs of Batamido, who was yeah. initially hailed to have done a very good job from the beginning. Um, how have we performed? Do you think Baro will keep it or will change it? Uh, if you ask me if I'm not misreading the situation, I think Baro Dauda is the only guy who I would say is assured Baro would keep maintaining him. I, I think, think so. I think, think, he's, I think he's, Baro likes him. And trust him. <laughs> and yeah, I think he's done a good job. Um, if you, I don't uh, know. Is, if I don't know about if that. If you discount the honorariums, <laughs> then nah, that was supposed to have been done. I would think and so. I, I don't think that's know. The only, that's the only yeah, but what did the Justice Ministry do? Well, there's still a backlog of, ca uh, of cases. I hear the, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, there, there are, are problems. Are, there's still a I lot hear of mess. a high court judge was angry with government's yeah. non-implementation of court orders. It's always the orders. same. The stories are the same. I think we should, we should focus on our So country. generally, if you are to change the government uh, and, not, and not using barrels yardstick, as you said, you would, you would effectively shake up everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. I would Nin shake up the government, 90 not, not of the ministers. Them. Everything. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yes, we, we, we expect Total that. disruption. Mm -hmm. Because even the foreign service you are talking about, for yeah. example, we spending so much What's money, money? Eight, over 800 million, million dollars in the foreign service. For what? Like, like for what? Like, like what do they bring? Like nothing. you go and put someone you in foreign service, you're you paying his children. children. Some of those international schools, you pay twenty thousand dollars. million dollars. Right? I think the location. And, like, and look at the people who are appointed into those things. In the whole of this region. Yeah. Uh, you know, you see, the problem here is they come with this rationalization. So you go and study diplomacy in some college and you come and you want to... We have common sense too. Absolutely. I would, I, I mean, I would, I would, I would, the whole of ECOWAS, I would just have it in Senegal. Abuja. No, Senegal and, Senegal, no, Senegal Senegal. and Abuja, you have two. These I would just have Senegal Stanley and Abuja. Yeah. The yeah. rest, we would appoint their own America, citizens to be, America to be and whatever. United you, you put one in Brussels, really? Malaysia and, and India. you put one in UK, because or UK India. also yeah. is important. Yeah, yeah. India. A small country like the government. But then they can always argue that if you are not uh, present, we, they if go and not beg. present, if we are not uh, present there, we will not no, have the begging. You don't it's have begging. <laughs> it's begging. We cannot, we cannot, the country cannot survive on begging. begging. We, have co we have money here to fix this country. Hmm. Money to fix this country. Imagine all the slippages we are talking, talking about. about yeah. Even not known proper use of even internet if for example if you go and as if you go and do an assessment at our ministries alone assessment maybe how much water we are buying that we're not supposed to buy fuel we are spend spending on that is not necessary internet costs that may not be necessary all the cost cost we Government do at the operational food. level at the yeah. ministries alone yeah. and the departments you if you there. if you cut it yeah. that alone is in millions yeah, million. billions perhaps. yeah you go into the number of cars we buy every day yeah. umar was talking about public transportation system in europe public uh, public public oh, yeah. workers don't they go yeah. america don't they go oh, yeah. don't, I mean, every other even place. Do, even, are they required to have cars a, no. every even time? Even the, if if even the secretary of state will join a train, exactly. That's mm. it. In the Gambia, you can't even have a functioning public transportation system. Even twenty vehicles. One time, I didn't need to say that, but one diplomat of one foreign country gave some vehicles to Gambia government. And we are having a conversation and were telling me, do you know the state of those vehicles we donated? I <laughs> and I said, how am I supposed to know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. They don't even know what happened to them. <laughs> this is over 20, <laughs> over 20 buses. Oh, wow. Right? Well, could it be Turkish diplomat? I was, I was <laughs> well, you don't know what happened in this country. So, so a country cannot survive on begging. Mm -hmm. Like you are doing, if, if Gambia cultivates rice, for example, if we have enough rice in this country, like end of rise in this country. we're saving or we oh, are we at least not spending yeah we mm. spend over 50 million dollars on importation of rice every how year rice projects have we invested we go to agriculture and do an assessment white elephant not white because, elef because the problem is white when you bring a project mm. the director whatever they call a responsible will buy a product one, buy, one, buy yeah, a vehicle product. of three million go to agriculture and they you can just go to their car park and count the number count of projects the number of vehicles they, number of projects because every car every, project every comes yeah that, that's some. how you identify the projects the, the cars the vehicles pejep uh ladef whatever you, you you cannot know. So a country <laughs> cannot survive like a civil society. Absolutely. You apply for grant, you are uh, you begging. I mean, Neymar, meanwhile, everything about? from tax records, every, nothing is making sense. Like you have Absolutely. to. 
Yeah. So, so this country needs to sit down and look at what is wrong, fundamentally wrong, and has been wrong for a very long time. This uh, thing that ah uh, Jambe did this, can you can do this. Ah uh, UDP uh, says that, Jawara so that therefore we can also be wrong. No, no, no. So it's like you are saying, no, party is wrong, so I can also be wrong. Afford to be wrong. Uh, yeah. Well, at least so, that's not the Gambia. Yeah. We and and want, and in my, and I think that. You see, when you come into this system, mm. they, they rationalize everything. Even vehicles, they tell you, ah, you know, near civil servant or motor Yes, that's what happened to the vehicle policy. Now, if you come into this country, yeah. like, let's fix it or destroy it. Mm -hmm. If you come, yeah. do the right thing. If they don't want, let them leave. Let them leave. Let's fix it or destroy, or destroy it. it together, yeah. together. That's it. I mean, if you are it has to be uncomfortable. If you are you fixing something that's broken for yeah, years, yeah. for decades, yeah. that has to be uncomfortable. Absolutely. You if it's not comfort uncomfortable, you then you're not doing the right thing. You have to have the conviction the and guts. the temerity to do yeah. what you think is right. Yeah, yeah. That's the mandate. Yeah. If the people disagree, they vote you out. But if yeah. you are corrupt, you cannot do you it. Cannot because do. in my experience, yeah. you know what Gambian public servants do? When you come, the first thing they do is to give you all the opportunities, all everything. The, all the they problems. lavish you, uh, all, all the and they record it they record. by evidence, oh, yeah. and they put it they put on the so you somewhere. Are. When you start to do anything reform, they bring it out. Bring I it have out. had cases like that. Yeah. I've had cases where people brought me cases that they've investigated themselves, their own bosses. Yeah. Not because they want to do the right thing. Yeah. What but because that's a blackmail file for them. You, once you are in there, that's what they said. It's totally the mouth. That Corruption is, is an art in this country. So that is why when people say, ah, this person should do the right thing, I tell you, you stupid. <laughs> this guy has, this guy, if he wants to do the right thing right now, everything he also did in the dark and would yeah, be revealed. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much, uh, journalist Mustafa Dabo and Omar Wali, for your perspectives on what I would call basically a news in review for this week we hope when we come back there would have been a new cabinet and uh, the country would be on a more stronger footing we hope in the next five years until we come back your way again in the brunch on kefado goodbye for now Data on all Gamsel data bundles. Buy 20 megabytes and get extra 4 megabytes. Buy 50 megabytes and get extra 10 megabytes. Buy 100 megabytes and get extra 20 megabytes. Any amount of Gamsel data bundle you buy, you will receive 20% extra data for free. Dial star 302 star. Data amount hash. Or go to your Yaibor menu and choose your data bundle now. Gamsel data is fast, lasts longer, and very reliable. Gamsel Yaibor. Planning to have an uninterrupted electricity and water supply from solar energy in the Gambia and beyond? Worry no more, because Solar Enterprise will provide you with the solutions at reasonable cost. We have experienced personals who can install and advise you about your electricity and water supply with a warranty period. We have good quality solar products from North America and Europe. We provide services and sell products to individuals, organizations, institutions, private offices, communities, and government. These products are solar panels, batteries, charge controllers, inverters, water pump, water heaters, freezers, submissable pumps, and general solar accessories. Visit our stores at 48 Kairaba Avenue and Brusubi Highway, or you can call us on 7657-479. 980-8483-340-9400 or 635-9906. We live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. Innovarex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C and many more services with the highest efficiency. 
in delivering results. The addition to our flagship, Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve.